Rich Rodriguez all fired up as his team beat Pittsburgh last week. Their fifth straight victory. They're trying to make it six in a row against a Syracuse team that is looking to become bowl eligible after a losing season last year. We are less than one minute to kick off as Syracuse wearing the all orange heads out to the field at the Carrier Dome. There is much at stake in the Big East. A three-way deadlock atop the standings with one loss apiece, Miami, Pittsburgh, and West Virginia. West Virginia's lone loss in the conference coming to Miami, and they have not lost a game since. Hello and welcome to the Carrier Dome. Pam Ward along with Chris Spielman and uh, West Virginia right now. At one point, Chris, they're one and four, and they can still win the Big East. Quite a turnaround. Yeah, they, they were one and four after they got beat by, by Miami. They had to make a choice, a conscious decision to turn it around, and they did. They could have gone to the dark side no what they've done as coach rodriguez said they put a little more tape on and a little more air in their helmet and they turned it around and our chance to be big east champions and some other things would have to happen for that but it's very simple right now for syracuse chris they need one more win and they are bowl eligible well that's it and they started out slow too and syracuse has a young defense which has gotten better and they feel like they can compete with anybody because they had miami on the ropes last week they didn't get it done but they want to get this game to prove that they're a bowl eligible football Team. In fact, they lost 17 to 10 to Miami. Did a terrific job defensively in that football game, and it's been quite a turnaround. As Syracuse was only four and eight last season, and with the win today, they could go to six and four. Syracuse has won six of the last eight games between these two teams. Last year, West Virginia won in Morgantown, 34 to seven. West Virginia won the toss, but is deferred, and Syracuse wearing those all orange uniforms will receive johnny morant very talented wide receiver what do you think of the orange unis i, I like them i think it, it sets them apart a little bit that's <laughs> yeah. for sure a lot of orange they play clemson it would be blinding we are underway now at the carrier dome as morant decides to take it out from a couple of yards deep in his end zone and he is stopped short of the 20 by the west virginia special teams as K.J. Harris, the backup running back, was in on the tackle. Senior R.J. Anderson, eight yards short of the 4,000-yard passing mark for his career. He is a threat to run as well as to throw, and he really has turned around things now in his senior season after a somewhat rocky junior year. What's well, important for him to get off early to have Syracuse get this offense rolling a little bit. With him having been successful, Reyes is much more of a successful back. Oh, is he ever? And there's Walter Reyes. Thousand-yard rusher again for the Orangemen, the junior from Struthers, Ohio. Speaking of Walter Reyes, he is indeed working his way up the Syracuse record books and ranks, recording a second straight 1,000-yard season. Reyes also is the second leading receiver on this team. Senior Nick Romeo has started every game of his collegiate career at Syracuse, leads a line that's given up only eight sacks all season. That is fewest in the Big East. And that also is a testament to the running ability of R.J. Anderson. Second and eight for the Orangemen. Anderson's first pass is completed to Rashard Williams as Williams is stopped down around the 20-yard line. Picking up about five, Lance Frazier in on the stop. West Virginia in its second season using a 3-3 stack defense. Injuries have forced junior Jason Hardy into a starting role at defensive end. So he doesn't get a lot of attention. Grant Wiley, one of the best linebackers in the country. His coaches love his competitiveness and leadership skills. And Brian King making a smooth transition to free safety from corner. Lance Frazier also one of the leaders in the defensive backfield that, yes, sports five DBs. So now on third down, Reyes gets the football and picks up the first down. Actually, it's a turnover as he was over the first down marker. And Reyes, who never fumbles the football, in fact, has not fumbled since last year against West Virginia, loses it. It's a good job by R.J. Anderson going to his outlet back just to get the first down. And a good job by Reyes ducking the tacklers and, and able to pick up the first down yardage. But number one rule, ball security. You see right there, the ball comes out, and it's a great job of coming in. King coming in and stripping the ball out of there. Outstanding play by West Virginia's defense. That's how you want to start out. Excuse me, Yorko, Scott Yorko stripping that out. Jerko with the great play as West Virginia gets it in terrific field position, and there is their superstar running back in Quincy Wilson. The Wilson is stopped short by James Weish, one of the two young defensive ends for this orange defense. 
Rasheed Marshall is a double threat. He joined Major Harris as only the second West Virginia quarterbacks ever to run for over 1,000 career yards. Rasheed is just a junior and actually grew up in the same neighborhood as Major Harris in Pittsburgh. Marshall to the air for the first time, and he floats that a little bit too high as he was looking for Travis Garvin. Looking at the West Virginia offensive line, they're very young, starting to gel, starting two redshirt freshmen, including the center, Jeremy Hines. And the backs and receivers, Quincy Wilson is the guy to look at as he is averaging 122 yards a game on the ground. Now on third and nine. Marshall, the running threat, takes off but doesn't get far as Weish tackles him down from behind. That's a good series there for Weish right now. He stopped Quincy uh, Wilson cold in his tracks and is able to get pressure on a quarterback draw, retrace his steps like a good defensive lineman does, and tackles Rasheed Marshall. Excellent effort by the defensive end. After that early turnover, Reyes fumbling the pass. This is a 42-yard field goal attempt for Brad Cooper, his longest this year, 43 yards. We saw him hitting from about 60 during warm-up, so this should be a walk in the park. Cooper gets it up. It's long enough, but it's no good. So Cooper jerks it wide right, and Syracuse is able to survive the early turnover. The Orangemen have the football when we come back. Brad Cooper has missed a field goal after a Syracuse turnover, so we are still scoreless. And just to clarify, Walter Reyes did fumble the last time uh, Syracuse had the football, but it was on a catch. So his mark of carries, now over 300 carries without a fumble, is still intact. R.J. Anderson going up top, floating it long, and the one-handed catch is made by Johnny Moran, and he is in for the touchdown. What a play by Moran. What a play, and what a throw by R.J. Anderson. Set up off to the bootleg, he's going to the backside post, and Adam Jones, the corner, is going to come in here, pitcher, and he goes for the pick, and taking his eyes off the receiver where he had a he had a chance to right here, swap paint. He decided not to swap paint, he fell on the ground. Johnny Bumrant keeping great concentration, one hand catch, and into the orange paint with the orange uniform for six. <laughs> That is a 75-yard play, and Moran is a guy who came here as a very heralded recruit. Somewhat of a disappointing career, but his senior season, he's coming alive now as he has caught his third touch or fifth touchdown of the season. And the extra point gives Syracuse the 7 to nothing lead. Pam, that's set up by the missed field goal by West Virginia. See, that missed field goal, in my eyes, is just like a turnover because your defense responded to the sudden change in the challenge. Then you come here, and this is a big play for them. They fake the zone running play to Walter Reyes, and RJ is going to split out and set his feet and throw the deep ball. And you got a 6'5 receiver out there. You can throw jump balls, and Adam Jones had position to make a kill shot on him. He decided not to. He tripped, and Morant, keeping focus on the football, takes it into the end zone. And RJ Anderson say, yep, thank you. Good, good pass, good play. Good call, too. After, like after a turnover, they, they get the field goal missed. They get the ball. They go right up over the top. It's a good call by Coach Pasqualoni and his staff. George DeLeon is the offensive coordinator. And there's Paul Pasqualoni, who has uh, been at Syracuse for quite a spell now. Now in his 13th year, he's won 100 games, lost 51, and tied three. The 10th winning is active head coach. Trying to get his team back into a ball game and... Uh, they have taken the 7-0 lead thanks to Johnny Morant's 75-yard catch, which is, by the way, his longest catch ever and the longest of the season for Syracuse. But with the 7-0 lead, Syracuse kicking off, and West Virginia gets the ball for the second time. West Virginia now, they're going to come out and execute their no huddle offense. And bounces right in front of Adam Jones, who gets it at his own goal line. 
And the orange, orange men tackle him down around the 17-yard line. Troy Swittenberg in on the play. Let's take a look now at the West Virginia offensive line, a very young offensive line. Jeremy Hines is the redshirt freshman in the center, one of two redshirt freshmen who start on this line, which really, again, has started to gel as the season has gone along. They lost a lot of good players from last year. All right, so West Virginia got the ball in good field position first time around after a fumble, and now they have it back on their 16. Lindsey Wilson, who ran for over 200 yards last week against Pittsburgh, is stopped dead in his tracks. Christian Ferrara and Callum Pruitt coming up to make the stop. So we take a look now at the Syracuse defensive line. They're experienced and tough. Josh Thomas worked as hard in the classroom as on the field, graduated with a degree in psychology in only four years. Gashlin is the sack master. In his first season at middle linebacker, Rich Scanlon leads his team in tackles, coming off a career-high 17 tackles against Miami. And Anthony Smith leads the way with three interceptions. He's also blocked a punt and taken an in for a touchdown this season. The orange defense. Now second and 13, little swing pass to Wilson. His 13th catch of the season, and it's a flag is down as Wilson is pushed out of bounds past the first down marker, but we'll have to check out the flag. This is coming back now. I'll tell you, that was a great effort by the Syracuse defensive end. Josh Thomas getting out, chasing the screen, and he's the one that caused the penalty. Quincy Wilson, we all know, is a bruising uh, pass catcher. That 33-yard pass catch against Miami that gave them the lead with two minutes to go, only to have Miami come back and win, was uh, has to be an SB nominee. Here's John run. Smith. Holy offense. Ten yards. I'm sorry. Half the distance to the goal. Remains second down. We got Henderson, wide receiver, holding and on a screen passes. It's an awful lot to ask wide receivers. They need to hold their position and hold their blocks. It's a long time to hold a block because of the long development process of the screen. Well, Henderson Jr. from Mobile, Alabama. Wilson is out. K.J. Harris, a junior from Tampa, now in the backfield. Harris gets it. Takes it right up the gut. Diamond Ferry makes the stop from the strong safety spot, but that's an eight-yard gain for KJ. This is where Rich Rodriguez, now he runs three different tempos of the no-huddle offense. And this is one where you might want to slow it down a little bit to give your defense a chance to catch its breath. Marshall frantically gets that playoff. Cuts inside, and he is stopped down by Rich Scanlon, the very talented middle linebacker who uh, is also a very intelligent guy. Pre-med major, about a 3-7 grade point average, and as you might expect, the coaches rave about his ability. And a Syracuse's defense can run. That's why I don't understand the roll into the short side of the field because Rasheed Marshall does not have a lot of room to work. They have three receivers in the short side. Not a, lot of, not a lot of room to work over there. And he ran out of room quickly as Todd James punts it to Marcus Clayton. And Clayton has some real estate in front of him. He is tackled down around the 47-yard line by Grant Wiley, the talented middle linebacker, making a stop on special teams. Syracuse has the ball in the lead when we come back. Harmon will try to squib it. And he SPN2's Rivalry Week, presented by Pontiac. Vote for this week's ultimate Pontiac high-performance play at ESPN.com slash Pontiac. And in part by Bowflex, the choice of professionals. Visit Bowflex on the web at BowflexEndzone.com. It is a beautiful late November day outside of the Carrier Dome. Our producer, Bart Fox, director Bob Fratarelli, were on top of the dome yesterday, and we weren't invited. I, not that I would have gone anywhere. I don't know if I'd go up there. No, no, I don't think so. First down, Syracuse with a 7-0 lead in the ball. Walter Reyes does some dancing around his backfield, and he is dropped down for no gain. Mike Lorello among those in on the stop with Scott Jerko, and 
Boy, Syracuse has been just a, an opposite team when they are at home, Chris, much better numbers-wise and record-wise. Well, yeah, and anytime, you know, the yards per game, if you're almost doubling that or, or getting close to doubling that, that's an output, and that's the comfort level that you have at home. And I'll tell you another thing that Coach Pete talked about yesterday was field position. It must take advantage of field position against this West Virginia defense. And she says that's one reason why they are much better than they were record-wise last year, and there's a fumble by Reyes. He has two fumbles today. That time on the carry, and he is staying down on the turf. Yeah, and, it's, and I think you got it. he's holding that knee, which is no good because Lance Frazier came up from his corner position and, and delivered a shot and came in and got skinny and looked lean, and, man, he popped in. And it's a uh, water race is a guy you don't want to tackle high. He goes low, he puts his helmet on the football, closes the gate in front of the ball, knocks the ball out. I hope this isn't too serious, but you never want to see a kid grab his knee like that, ever. Reyes staying down. I mean, the uh, concern of the crowd, as should be, because he looks in a lot of pain. And Syracuse did recover the fumble, so Reyes did not lose it. Jared Jones was able to, well, was able to get on it. You see right here, Lance Frazier, this is just a sweep with a pulling guard coming out, helping him out. And you'll see Lance coming in there and, and really giving a good shot and putting his helmet across the bow, putting his head right on the football. Ooh. Damn. He got low. He had to get low to avoid that big guard coming, and he cut him off. So Walter Reyes is having his left knee looked at, as you saw it, bend backwards, and it was by no means a dirty play at all by Frazier. He just fell into him low, and the concern is on Reyes. No, uh, Lance Frazier had big Matt Torillo come around pulling, and, and Matt's job is to take the contained player out. So Lance, what he did was got lower than the big offensive guard and was able to get a helmet on the football. Unfortunately, he caught his knee with him. Syracuse already thin at running back as Damian Rhodes, who uh, backed up Walter Reyes, has been out with an injury himself. So as Walter Reyes has helped up, we'll take a quick break and have an update when we come back to Syracuse. Walter Reyes was helped off the field after his left knee collapsed on a tackle and uh, we will update his status as soon as we get it from the Syracuse sideline. Meanwhile, Tim Washington, a freshman from Bristol, Connecticut, is in for Syracuse. He goes out in the pass pattern and they throw it to him right away, but it is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Adam Lenort was among the guys uh, with their hands up in the air and Syracuse has to punt. Let's take a look again at Reyes's injury. See Lance Frazier coming up, getting underneath the guard. Oh, his foot got caught in the turf and under Frazier's back. It's a tough duty, but uh, Lance Frazier does a good job of just doing his job, getting underneath the big man, making a play. Brendan Carney coming in, and that one is sailing towards the end zone. And West Virginia will take over from its 20, a 55-yard punt, but take away 20 on the touchback for Carney. Rivalry Week presented by Pontiac continues tonight at 7.45 Eastern Time on ESPN. The Iron Bowl. Alabama takes on Auburn on 7 Eastern and ESPN 2. you got Clemson taking on South Carolina. Lou Holtz trying to get his team bowl eligible. Check it out. Alabama Auburn also available nationwide on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator, DirecTV, or the Dish Network for more information. Log on to ESPN.com. Clemson and South Carolina have been playing football since 1909. And you can see them this evening. Some great games throughout the day. West Virginia with the ball. Marshall, his turn to go on top to Chris Henry. He has Swittenberg beaten. And a flag is down. Maybe he stepped out of bounds and then came back in to catch it. As Marshall floated that up, Henry was open forever. Now, if he did step out of bounds, that's on Chris Henry for not knowing where he is on the football field. He's got to stay in bounds. Illegal touching, offensive team. The receiver went out of bounds, was forced to touch, come back inside. Also down at the spot. You see right here, and Chris Henry does a good job of beating his man. But right there, he stepped out of bounds. Right there. He's got to be aware of where he is on the football field. And Chris Henry's been around a little bit. He's got to understand that I'm much close to the sidelines. I've got to keep my feet in bounds. 
right there he's out of bounds now that's on him because he has all kind of field to work with Rashid will get the ball out to him but know where you are in the football field so that doesn't happen that's a mental error well, that negates a huge huge play as they go back to Quincy Wilson he goes down in the arms of Lewis Gashlin as we check into the first time of Matt Weiner Matt. Pam Taco Bell takes us to Bloomington, Indiana. Purdue and Indiana for the old Oaken Bucket. Gerard Boyd, three-yard touchdown run. Boyd was up 7-0. Indiana's tacked on a field goal to make it 7-3. All right, Matt. Well, at least Indiana has scored. It's been a very long season for the Hoosiers. As uh, Purdue trying to bounce back from their loss last week. Flag down on that last play. Gashlin, boy, he is uh, just a solid guy in the middle. The senior from Miami. It's four sacks on the season, 17 in his career. Dead ball, personal foul. Offense. 18 points. Third down. One thing that uh, Syracuse is doing is winning first and second down, and it starts with your two interior defensive linemen, like you, you said, Pam Gashlin and Farrar. They're, they're two studs in there. They're hard guys to move, and what I like is on the snap of the ball, they're getting great penetration. Not a lot of Quincy Wilson, and he seems to hit on a running game. And that brings up a third and 13, and the folks in the Carrier Dome getting up. It's very loud. Paul Pasqualoni says it's certainly an ally when they're playing well, and it's an ally right now. As Marshall barks out signals. Up top, completes it to McQuell Henderson, and Henderson... Good awareness there as he gets the first down, a 14-yard gain when they needed 13. Yeah, uh, two, uh, three points to make right there. West Virginia does a good job of picking up the zone blitz that was run by Syracuse. Flannery and Scanlon came on a zone blitz. Rasheed Marshall went away from the zone blitz, hits his wide receiver. Then McGill does a good job of knowing where the sticks are, turning and driving for the stakes. Outstanding execution by the Mountaineer offense. So yeah, give him 15 yards of credit on that one. First down. Marshall in trouble, gets it off towards Henderson as he was pursued by Josh Thomas. Let's go back to Matt Weiner. Hi, Pam. Virginia and Georgia Tech this afternoon in Charlottesville. Cavaliers on the move. Matt Schaub looking for his big tight end. Heath Miller's got him for 10 yards. Wahoo's up 7-zip. Matt Schaub, talented quarterback. Miller, their tight end down there for Virginia as they take that lead. Now, keep us up to date on a lot of great games this afternoon. Now second and ten for the Mountaineers. Wilson, boy, nothing doing as he is enveloped by Diamond Ferry. Picks up maybe a yard on that play. It's a good job by Diamond Ferry coming up from a safety position point, supporting the run. But watch right here. Big fella in there, Gashlin. Getting off a block and, and getting a leg on a Diamond Ferry coming up and closing the gate in front of the ball, putting his helmet on a helmet, swapping paint, all that good stuff. And he did it hatless as Marshall. Plenty of time, looking long, and that time it is caught by Chris Henry and then dropped. Let's we'll see what they say. Was it a catch? Well, they call him down. Yes, they call him down and the catch. No fumble. A big 43-yard gain. Now, Coach P talked about this and what West Virginia was lacking and what Rich Rodriguez had at Clemson when he was the offensive coordinator. There was big, tall, wide receivers, and Chris Henry provides that at 6'5". He just goes up over people and he'll throw the jump ball. And he said in the second or third series, West Virginia loves to go get, go down the field deep. They'll throw deep balls and jump balls to him all day, and when you can execute like that, you'll be successful. Indeed, we're 43 yards later. It's now first and 10 from the 25. Wilson right up the middle, and he shows his power and his speed. It will be first down and goal for the Mountaineers. Give 17 to Quincy. We talked about the battle inside, and now Syracuse defense starts with these two guys right there. It's a good job by West Virginia's offensive line. White comes down the line, but he misses him. There you see the power of Quincy Wilson. Just, just really powerful in the legs. Rumor has it he squats over 700 pounds. Now, I'd pay admission to see that. <laughs> that's, that's quite something. He had 208 yards and four touchdowns on the ground last week against Pittsburgh. Really hit the hole that time. Wilson this time goes around, and again, the perimeter of that Syracuse defense is able to uh, tackle him early. 
We are in Syracuse at the Carrier Dome where West Virginia still seeking the Big East Championship still in the hunt, taking on Syracuse, which needs a win to become bowl eligible. Pam Ward and Chris Fieldman joining you. The big news so far, Walter Reyes, the talented running back for Syracuse, left with a hurt left knee. The word is now that his return is questionable. And about him, you see the Q's negative one rushing yards. West Virginia is knocking on the door, down 7-0. Marshall, again, they're testing that outside, Chris, and it's not working. Well, what that was basically was a quarterback sweep where you have Quincy Wilson as your lead blocker. And it was a nice job out there by Kelvin Smith turning the ball inside. He's going to become the lead blocker. And watch Kelvin Smith right here. He'll turn the ball inside. See how he keeps working to the sidelines? Forcing Rashid to get inside and allowing the pursuit to catch catch this that's, that's good team discipline defense. Marshall going to the end zone, finally firing it in the direction of McCall Henderson, but that is incomplete, and it's fourth down. Good pressure by Ryan LaCasse, sophomore from Stoughton, Massachusetts. Anytime you're on the road, Pam, you have to get points in the red zone. This is the second opportunity West Virginia had in the red zone. They missed the first opportunity. See if they capitalize here. Brad Cooper missed a 42-yard field goal, wide right. This one is from 25. He's six for six inside 30 yards this season. Make it seven for seven as he nails that one. So Brad Cooper gets West Virginia on the board after a big play sets up the Mountaineers. But they still trail Syracuse seven to three. Walter Reyes has stayed on the Syracuse bench, and he hurt his left knee on a tackle by Lance Frazier, and his return is questionable. And uh, that could very well be the only information we get. There are new rules in effect uh, with uh, medical privacy, and uh, the Syracuse uh, sports information people actually giving us more than some schools by telling us that he hurt his left knee. He at least has not gone into the locker room for any sort of extensive examination, as Marcus Clayton drops the kickoff and then takes a knee. Syracuse will take over from the 20. Sunday night, Steve Spurrier returns to the Sunshine State when his Redskins take on the Miami Dolphins and one Ricky Williams. Catch it Sunday night at 8.30 Eastern. You can also see it on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator, DirecTV, or the Dish Network for that. It all starts with NFL Primetime presented by Miller Lite at 7.30 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And for the first time ever, Miami will wear orange jerseys in that game. And your brother Rick, who's wow. a personnel guy, have any say in that? Uh, he wants to be like Syracuse, I guess. <laughs> yeah. A lot of orange in the Redskins play. And that carry is by Thump Belton, the fullback, who picks up about nine yards or so and then has a little jawing match with Brian King. Certainly not a known as a, a big-time ball carrier. Thump is more of the blocker, but it's a nice little call. A daily own by getting his fullback involved just to keep the awareness for West Virginia. Now, this is not, it's a 3 3 5, but it's actually a 3 5 3. We have three down linemen, five linebackers, and three DBs. They move people around, as does Syracuse. They run out of a lot of different formations, use a lot of motion on offense. Dalton gets the carry, slips the tackle, picks up the first down, and a whole lot more. Brian King makes the tackle, but a flag is down close to the line of scrimmage. Belton's real given. His given name is Keith, and the penalty is against Syracuse, so negate the run by Thump. Well, Thump thumped him because what Lorella was in position to make the play at the line of scrimmage, and Thump ran the through run, the arm tackle. Holding offense. Two yards of sets in the previous spot. Remain second down. right there it's a good job here comes Lorello he's in there but he leaves his feet and he doesn't have a chance the umpire throws the flag back on the center holding the nose guard this is a different front for the offensive line for Syracuse to block now it's an odd front what that means is that they'll have a center the center will have a guy right over him and he's a true nose guard playing right on his nose as they say right here that's, the name. that's Ben Lynch as a flag and whistles and no play that time on second and 11 and that changes a lot of things because they're not used to seeing it Ball start, 
offense five yard penalty still second down so if he's going backwards we take you back to matt weiner matt and Penn State visiting East Lansing over on ESPN. Spartans get right to it in the first, down 3 nothing. Jeff Smoker to Kyle Brown, and Brown does the rest. A little move, and there he goes. 80 yards, Spartans up 7-3. Jeff Smoker with a lot of guys from which to choose to throw the football as Kyle Brown takes it in. Great sprinter in high school. Tim Washington catches it, and then gets just banged up by Brian King. All that, and he only picks up a yard. King is a guy who has switched over from corner to safety and has uh, really flourished. Well, it's a natural position. I'll tell you what, he comes up and makes an outstanding form tackle the right way to do it because he closed the gate in front of the football. That means he's tackling with the full man. Watch his pursuit right here. He's coming to the line of scrimmage, reading, and bam, gets in front of the guy and spins him around. Outstanding play by Brian King, closing the gate in front of the ball. And we'll have a definition, a further definition of closing the gate as we try to get people familiar with Chris's unique language. Sort of English. I've got to get used to it. For Robert Spielman. All the time in the world for Anderson. And finally, he runs out of time as he throws it away. Jason Hardy was all over him. It's a great cover. That's what they call a coverage sack. Certainly, the offensive line of secure Syracuse provided time for R.J. Anderson to move around, but the effort of the pass rushers for West Virginia, hung in there, kept going to the ball, and made a sack. Thank That's a cover due to the coverage in the secondary by the Mountaineers. Yeah, great coverage. That is the fourth sack of the year for Hardy, and only the ninth sack that Syracuse has given up all season. Carney in the punt it from the lip of his own goal line. Adam Jones fields it. Nice cut by Jones. And Adam Jones, only the kicker to beat. And the punter gets him. Brendan Carney with the stop, but a 37-yard return for Adam Jones. Well, Adam Jones broke a few ankles out there in orange pants because he gave him a leg and took it away. I mean, that was a nice little move out there on the punt, uh, punt coverage team. You see him right here. There's a shake and bake. Here comes another. Oh, there's an ankle breaker. Then he's off. That's outstanding effort by Adam Jones. And Kellen Pearl was the guy. He got shook. And here comes the punter. Now let's see if he closes the gate in front of the ball. I don't know if he's interested in swapping paint, but he does a pretty good job. He got oh. a shoe. That's not bad. I'll take it. Adam Jones, whose nickname is Pac-Man, one of the best punt returners around is Wilson. Picks up a couple, is dragged down by Diamond Ferry. All right, closing the gate. We saw Brian King do it as we uh, check into Chris Spielman's glossary. What does it mean? To make it get tackled with one's head in front of the ball carrier. And the reason for that, Pam, is then you're tackling with your full body strength. When you play good big time backs, if you close the gate behind the ball, your head behind the ball carrier, a good back will run right through that. And you're not using your, all your strength and your force. But when you close the gate in front of the ball, he goes down in a hurry. That's exactly what Brian King showed us. Now a little reverse. As Travis Garvin gets it, this is his specialty, and Garvin takes it in for the touchdown. 20 yards for the Mountaineers score. Well, missed tackles. MTs everywhere. Flag is down. Might be that celebration gig going on. Oh, good Syracuse. Everybody's not happy. That's all set up by Quincy Wilson. I mean, they got they got Quincy on the brain. So what do you do? You come back. After the score, there was a celebration foul. Scoring team, 15 yards and assessed on the try. Touchdown was good. I don't know about it. I mean, yeah. you know, football's yeah. celebration. Right here, Quincy Wilson, who's been a factor, gives it to Garvin. Watch this. Oh, he's going to make people miss. Nobody's touching him. They're able to get good blocking, sustained blocks again, like the screen pass. The reverse play is where you have to hold your blocks a long time, and Travis Garvin does a good job of finding the hole and hitting it and bursting to the end zone. It's Garvin's second rushing touchdown of the season, and they like to use him on reverses, and it worked perfectly that time. So now a 35-yard extra point attempt for Brad Cooper. Able to get that one home, so the uh, celebration penalty not hurting West Virginia, but plenty to celebrate as Garvin takes it in. 
You know, Syracuse has got to respond now, Pam. They're, they're, their guy's down. Reyes is down. But in, in all sports, that's part of the game. So one man's loss, unfortunately, is another man's opportunity. So they got to find a way to respond right now. And West Virginia, quick scoring drives. This one just took 43 seconds. The majority of them have been under three minutes and 18 seconds. And Pac-Man Adam Jones helped set that up with a punt return. Well, he did. Then you have Quincy Wilson doing this. Does a good job of executing a handoff, which is not no easy task. And Rasheed Marshall getting a big block out there on the defensive end for Josh Thomas. Not knocking him down, but getting in his way and, and prohibiting him to make a tackle. Outstanding, Rasheed. Team football. Adam Jones with that 39-yard punt return set it up. Jones actually is seventh in the country, averaging over 28 yards per punt return. So the Pac-Man gave West Virginia a short field, and Travis Garvin and company took advantage. Yeah, Cam, he made a good decision catching it on the bounce. I, I'm all for that because you don't want to give the, the Syracuse or any team that's punting a football to you a chance to have the ball roll 25 yards. Make a decision. You have to have courage. He did. He made the first man miss, and he's off to the races. Punt returners pretty much have to have courage to do that. Oh, to big time courage. Just to catch to it. Yeah, you were you ever a punt returner? High school I was, yeah. And? and I did all right. Yeah. I did all right. Did I, I didn't have the fair catch rule, though. I never implored the fair catch. <laughs> well, why am I not surprised by that? And the up end fields the kickoff and takes it up to the 34-yard line. Brian McCass, the defensive end, making like a returner. Pretty good there. Let's go back to Matt. Pat, Georgia is still in the midst of the BCS hunt in between the hedges against Kentucky today. It's Michael Cooper, the freshman, left side. He's going to lean and stretch, get in, 10-yard touchdown. Bulldogs up 7-0. All right, Matt, still a lot, a lot to be decided there in the SEC East. Huge game later in the West with Ole Miss taking on LSU. And Syracuse now, for the first time today, has the football down. Down 10-7. Anderson gives it to Tim Washington. Washington picks up about three. Washington in there again because Walter Reyes is out with a hurt knee. And Damian Rhodes, who had been the number two back, has now missed several games with an ankle injury. Actually, this will be his fifth straight game he's missed with the ankle. So now it's Washington, the freshman's turn to get a shot. A lot of different formations. That time they had an unbalanced line. They motioned to an unbalanced line. West Virginia didn't adjust to it. They might come back to that play eventually soon because of the non-adjustment by the Mountaineer defense. That in the memory banks. Second and seven, Washington picked up three. And a little fake, and Anderson hangs onto it. And RJ is taken down by Adam Jones. A Pac-Man gets him down around the knees, but that's a five-yard gain. I'll tell you, this West Virginia defense is like sharks to chum. I mean, they run to the football. They see the bait in the water, and they go, and they attack. It looked like, to me, R.J. Anderson had a, had a lot of room to run, and Jones there came up and, and, and leveled him. He's that great punt returner, so you know he has speed and oh, yeah. not afraid to stick his head in there. Third and one. Syracuse trying to convert on this third down with full house backfield. And they give it up to Daryl Kennedy, and he loses yardage. We got to block it. Adam Lenort just wrapped him up high and hawk tied him. Well, what they did is they brought their linebackers into the gap, so they had an eight-man front. It was just about eight men on the line of scrimmage and penetration. There was a missed blocking assignment because you cannot let. You got to protect the inside first. You got to protect inside to outside, not outside to inside. Lenort shoots the gap. Nobody blocks him. Makes a good tackle. Lenort had 14 tackles and a sack last week against Pittsburgh, and that was a nifty tackle there. They lost a couple. And on fourth and three, that Syracuse will be forced to punt. First quarter coming to a close. Syracuse trailing 10-7. The second quarter is about to get underway. Pam Ward and Chris Spielman joining you as Rivalry Week continues. Brendan Carney with his third punt already. Lance Frazier says, I want no part of that. And it takes a great Syracuse bounce, and the special team guys get down there and kill it around the three as we send you to Matt Weiner. 
Well, Pam, one of the advantages Michigan might have on Ohio State, aside from home field today, is playmakers. They've got more of them, so they put Steve Breston under center. Second rushing touchdown of the season, seventh overall for him. Big Blue on top, 7-0 in the early going. All right, Matt, and the uh, guy to my right here is uh, interested in that game. Chris Spielman, big game for your Buckeyes. Yeah, a lot at stake there, but uh, back to the point of field to punt, Pam, that time... Crazy didn't feel the punt. Look where the ball ended up. Yep. As opposed to Jones feel the punt and where they ended up. Yep, because Pac-Man brought it back. That was a 54-yard punt. Killed down at the four. Quincy Wilson with the carry, and he has stacked up about a uh, one-yard gain. Let's take a look at our ESPN2 game track. These guys are playing for the Ben Schwartzwalder Trophy. He coached Syracuse to a national championship and played football at West Virginia. Ups and downs for Syracuse. This is an upper, a 75-yard touchdown pass to Johnny Morant. But the big down are Walter Reyes, their 1,000-yard rusher for two straight seasons. Hurt his left knee on that play. And here's the Pac-Man. You talked about it, Chris. You feel this bounce and punt, and it helps set up the last score. Well, back to live action as uh, Chris Henry was thrown to, but incomplete down the sideline. The offensive coordinator of this West Virginia team is head coach Rich Rodriguez right there. And he's going to take his shots downfield now. He doesn't care. They're going to throw it down the field. And they, they heave it deep, and they, the worst case scenario is it's a long punt. It's a hurry up offense anyway, a lot of times. Now, watch Rasheed. He's looking over there, looking at the sidelines. He'll check the defense, then he'll look at Rich Rodriguez. Rich will tell him to run the play, or he'll change the play at the line of scrimmage. That's the advantage they have with no huddle. And also, it's a disadvantage for Syracuse because they can't huddle up on defense. Third and nine. Marshall going down. Wrapped up by Christian Ferrara. So Syracuse should get the ball in very good field position. Well, again, the two guys inside for Syracuse defense. As they go, their defensive goes. And what they tried to do was spread the field and run the quarterback jaw, but Christian Ferrara had nothing to do with it. He took his man, disposed of him, made a good, clean tackle on the shifty Rashid Marshall. I love Ferrara. A guy likes to chew up loppers. That time he chewed up Marshall. It's Todd James, good punt back to Marcus Clayton. Fields it at his 44. Got a wall. Got a wall, some blockers, and Clayton. This time, it's up to the West Virginia kicker to stop him. He can't, and that's a touchdown. Marcus Clayton takes it in, and Syracuse regains the lead. No flags. Excellent job by Marcus Clayton of setting the return. Watch this. He's going to set the return to the middle of the field, then see his wall. Here comes the set. There's the set inside, then the breakout, bringing all the blue helmets inside, then he's off to the races, knowing where he's on the field, being patient, following his blockers to the promised land. Orange uniform on orange paint <laughs> equals six points. All right, Marcus Clayton with that touchdown, the second punt return for a touchdown by Syracuse this year. Clayton, eighth in the Big East, averaging about nine yards a punt return, and that 56 yarder is just going to up it. Extra point by Colin Barber is good. Got a couple of big punt returns in this game, and this one gives Syracuse the lead. The importance of setting the return. Get the defense inside. You go to the outside. You got speed like Clayton. You get this. Six. Marcus Clayton with some magic on that punt return, an up and down seesaw battle, and Syracuse has regained the lead at 14-10. That drives the coach crazy when you give up field position or touchdowns on special teams. That's why the punt is the most important play in football. Biggest change in field position. West Virginia gets it back. Adam Jones feels it around his three. Big hole right up the middle, but it closes quickly as he is tackled down around the 25-yard line. Troy Swittenberg, number 18, in on the stop once again. Pac-Man's down. He's getting up, though. He'll, he'll do some chomping in a minute. Go back to Clayton's work. Yeah, and a good job by Syracuse's punt return team of going to the next level, not blocking people behind them, but getting to the next level of defenders and blocking people in front of them. The poor punter <laughs> had no shot. 
Yeah, you, you'll see him. See, he's got no shot here. He's just going to try to dive. You just got to take legs and make a pile. You need to make a stack of rear ends to give yourself a chance. <laughs> he got too high. There he is. Beckman gets the gate closed in front of the ball right here. Swittenberg. Man, I tell you, I love the effort of both teams are really coming after him. Checking his leg right now. I think he got a rip shot. He's got the he's got the rip cages on. Those big fat things there. He should be okay, but he took a shot. Sometimes those hits go right through those pads. He's seventh in the country in kickoff returns. He's, he is uh, helped off the field. Todd James, by the way, was the punter for West Virginia yeah. who got level. Robbery Week presented by Pontiac continues tonight at 7.45 Eastern Time on ESPN. It is the Iron Bowl. Alabama taking on the Auburn Tigers at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. Clemson takes on South Carolina as the Gamecocks try to become bowl eligible. Eligible Bama Auburn also available on ESPN HD. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Alabama and Auburn. Great, terrific rivalry going on down there at the Iron Bowl. Colleague Bill Curry was 0-3 against Auburn, and soon thereafter was not employed by Alabama. Yeah. You got to beat Auburn, just like you got to beat Michigan if you're at Ohio State. Well, Henderson can't hold on to that pass. Yeah, just simple case of running before you had the ball. Again, you see Rashid Marshall in constant communication with Rich Rodriguez, and Rich is communicating with the guy in a in, in a yellow sweater right beside him. To the right of Rich is our guys in the yellow sweater right there. You see his jacket. He's the signal caller. Rich is telling him what to call this guy. Rich is talking. That's what she's looking at. Marshall sings it out, and it is complete to Travis Garvin. Garvin, the touchdown uh, maker, picks up eight. Let's go back to uh, Matt for something on Ohio State, Michigan. Well, Chris is not going to like this. Big Blue has struck again. John Navarre, reputation as a Wolverine, maybe riding on this game, finds Braylon Edwards who breaks a tackle, and there he goes, 64 yards, 13th touchdown catch of the season. Wolverines up 14-0. Braylon Edwards with that, and again, as uh, Matt mentioned earlier, they do have some playmakers from Michigan taking on that vaunted Ohio State defense. Three and two, and Marshall up to the line with the noise, gives it to Wilson, and Wilson bowls forward for the first down. Anthony Smith making the tackle. But boy, Wilson, for such a big guy, Chris, hits the hole quickly and has that burst. He's got a great burst. He's what they call a downhill runner. And you're going to see Quincy get the ball, and he'll make a cutback. Start right here and cut it back here to the open area. There he is, and he's just straight downhill. And when he gets those shoulders going downhill, he's a load now. Wilson, the son of Otis Wilson, the great linebacker for the Chicago Bears, who actually started his collegiate career here at Syracuse. Once he gets it again, picks up about four yards on that carry. So Otis finished his collegiate career at Louisville, where he became an All-American and was, as you know, Chris, a terrific player in the NFL. Yeah, great pro player team to look with uh, Wilbur Marshall and, of course, the great Mike Singletary. What a, what a trio of linebackers. As a linebacker, you must have loved that. Huh? Yeah, they, you don't, don't want to play those kind of guys, yeah. but man, they're good. Unselfish shit, they all did their job. Played well as a unit. Second and seven, Quincy picked up three. Ben Henderson looking over to the coaches on the sidelines. As Wilson gets it again, that speed, and he carries an orangeman with him for a yard or so and picks up nine more. Smith and Gregory getting some punishment on that play. Again, this is where Quincy Wilson's best. It's called a zone running play where he'll get the ball, and you see a great job of pushing Scanlon out of there. He's patient enough, yet downhill enough, to let the guard do his block, push a middle linebacker out of there, and he cuts it. And, Pam, there's nobody in the country, in my opinion, except maybe Cadillac Williams, that hits it downhill like Quincy Wilson hits it. Constant north-south runner as he takes a break. K.J. Harris is in. He is faked. Marshall going up top, and that is batted away. Anthony Smith, a good play as Rayshon Bolden was there. It's a good job by Anthony Smith of not losing track of the football, keeping good position, timing it up, going up and getting it. Does a good job of looking and leaning. You got to look and lean if you're a corner. There's a nice throw by Rashid. He underthrows a little bit. Watch it lean, lean into the receiver and bat the ball and play the football, not the man. It's an outstanding effort of going after the football and not the man. You have just as right much of that football as a wide receiver does. Out there just in the nick of time. Good play, Anthony Smith. Harris. 
KJ picking up about four. Rich Scanlon making his fifth tackle, and Harris is 24 years old, played some minor league baseball before he came and uh, decided to be a collegiate football player. Look and lean. Yeah, look and lean. This is when a defender will look and lean into the receiver so he can play the football and not get interference. And you can bump the man and yet still play the football. That was outstanding effort. An example. Anthony Smith. Yeah, yes. we'll define it after this play. A little play action. Short pass to Chris Henry. And Henry makes a short pass and a significant gain for the first down. Good job by Mike Watson, the offensive tackle. Look and lean, the ability to look back at the football and use the body to disrupt the pass pattern, just like Anthony Smith did there. Good corners or safeties when they're playing defense will look and lean into the pass catcher so he can disrupt his route or disrupt his ability to catch a football. See right here, there's Anthony Smith. Right there's the look. Now he's going to lean in and just turn that receiver enough to get the ball so he still has the ability to play the ball because he sees the ball. And when you lean, the receiver doesn't gain any yards on you because you're leaning and filling him with your body. So you get a little bit of contact, but not enough to be called for passing the right. They're uh, having a little trouble with the clock here at the Carrier Dome as we wait for that to be reset. Rich Rodriguez. He's fired up, isn't he? Yeah, he's just, <laughs> he doesn't smile very often. First down. How about Syracuse with only one first down, but they have the lead at 13 to 10. And that is Quincy Wilson. There's the power. Wilson, a nose for the end zone, but a good tackle. Anthony Smith having to make a lot of tackles in this game. A flag is down, however. Well, that was a 23-yard gain, but we wait the outcome of the flag. Defense lined up in the neutral zone. That penalty is a crime. First and goal, West Virginia. Quincy Wilson again. And you got Fofana leading on the block right there, the big fullback. He just breaks off people and runs through people. You got to hit him now, just like Anthony Smith did, because if you hit him low, see, I better tackle him high. If you hit him low, you're going to bounce off those tree trunks. He's only got 45 yards on this drive. He averages 123 a game. This is the 10th play of this drive, devoted on 70 yards. Why not give it back to number three? But this time, a good job by the Orange defense, who stack them up. Kellen Pruitt, sophomore from Clinton, Maryland, making the stop. Kellen Pruitt did a good job from his linebacker position. Right there, Fofana, who's a, normally a great blocker from the fullback position, threw a no-hitter. You, and that's good in baseball, bad in football. You don't want any no-hitters in football. you got to go in and hit somebody. Keep your head up as a fullback, too. Playing fullback's a lot like playing linebacker. you got to make contact and be the initiator of the contact. And that is why Fofana is in there. He has no carries and no catches this year, but is the blocking fullback as West Virginia takes... Well, actually, Syracuse has taken the timeout with West Virginia knocking on the door. So the defense will talk things over. West Virginia trying to regain the lead in this seesaw battle. Welcome back after the Syracuse timeout. West Virginia with the ball as they are second and goal inside the five yard line. Yeah, Coach P was down there coaching up the defense. He's telling his boys, hey, down here in the goal line, you got an orange man up. That's a little different than Cowboy up. They orange men up here in Syracuse. Uh, Paul Pascalone was a linebacker at Penn State, defensive-oriented head coach, and he was going after his guys, no doubt. We got to look at Rasheed Marshall. Marshall all alone in the end zone for the touchdown. Torrey Johnson, the tight end. So Marshall using his legs well on the rollout, and Johnson was all alone in the end zone. That's a great job by Torrey Johnson to find any open area, and a poor job by the Syracuse defenders of taking their eyes off coverage. You're a man-to-man. -man. You basketball him up. You, you keep your eyes on his eyes, especially down on the goal line, because if you don't, he'll sneak in an open area. Rasheed Marshall found him. Torrey Johnson with his second touchdown catch. He now has three catches on the season, two of them for touchdowns. Not a bad ratio as Brad Cooper knocks home the extra point. And we are going back and forth. Lead changes all the way around as West Virginia takes it back at 17-14. 
So an impressive drive as West Virginia goes 75 yards and they score it. Torrey Johnson, second touchdown of the season. Mountaineers up again. ESPN 2's Rivalry Week, brought to you by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. And by a diamond is forever. Show her how much you love her. There's a look at the Carnegie Library here on the uh, campus of Syracuse University in central New York State. A lot of folks at ESPN went to school here, including, uh, say, Mike Tirico. It's one guy who pops to mind right away. Dave Ryan. Dave Ryan. Rhino still lives here in the area. Good uh, journalism school. Got a lot of guys ready for uh, life after school. A good football program, but they are down now. Our third lead change of the game is now 17-14 West Virginia as Johnny Morant gets the kickoff. And he breaks a couple of tackles. Or he is nicked out of bounds around the 24-yard line right at that West Virginia bench. Pam, when you're playing defense on the goal line and you're playing man to man you've got to keep your eyes on a wide receiver watch the orange man's head right there see their eyes go back to the quarterback all he does is slip away from them you've got to basketball him up that means you got to keep your eyes right in his eyes and look in his eyes you cannot look back to the quarterback because there's no room to work down there he'll just slip in the open area and if you got an experienced quarterback like Rasheed Marshall he's going to find the open guy the tight end knew what to do he just slid off because the head's turned easy six points well, Marshall, it shows you they respect his running ability, but he was contained. He had a man on him. Mistake down by how the defense is the other way. Washington gets the pitch from Anderson. Flag is down as he has run for the first down, but we'll have to check out the marker. They might have a hold there on Johnny Morant. And the penalties are killing Syracuse right now. And he's talking to Grant Wiley right there. And it is indeed against Syracuse as we send you back to Matt Weiner. Hi, Pam. Get you an update on Penn State and Michigan State. Spartans on the move one more time. Jeff Smoker to Tyrell Dorch. Hands it off. 14-yard touchdown, make it 14-3. Illinois looking for their first Big Ten win of the season. Up 13-7 at home. Oh, the battle of Illinois. As Northwestern takes on the Illini. Northwestern trying to get bowl eligible itself. And holding call against Syracuse. Three penalties apiece for these teams. I thought Johnny Moran had his hands inside. Usually they're going to let that go. Your hands are inside. You can play ball now. You got to let them play. 8.54 left to go here in the second quarter. Slowed down by some penalties. So the gate got first down run. And another flag comes down. Ball start, offense, five yard penalty, still first down. Two penalties in a row now against Syracuse. We got more football coming away at 3.30 Eastern as rivalry week presented by Pontiac continues. Many of you will see Oklahoma take on Texas Tech. B.J. Simmons could be the number one passer in the history of college football after today. Others will see Iowa, Wisconsin, Maryland, NC State, or UCLA, USC. Check your local listings to see the game in your area. B.J. needs 83 yards to break Ty Detmer's single-season record of 5,188 <laughs> yards in a season, Chris. That is silly. And that is a completion to Jared Jones. Makes a nice move. And it's stopped down a couple of yards short of the first down by Pac-Man Adam Jones, who is healthy and playing. Nice call by Coach De Leon, throwing a good leg. Again, getting their, they know that this West Virginia pursues. One way to stop a pursuing defense is either you screen or you throw bootlegs. R.J. Anderson does a good job of delivering the football on the run. Jared Jones makes the guy miss and gets more yards. Anderson brings his team up to the line of scrimmage. Second and two. Hands it off to Greg Hanoyan, one of his big fullbacks. And Hanoyan, 6'1", 270 pounds, gets seven yards and a first down. And if you're just joining us, Syracuse has been without Walter Reyes, their 1,000-yard rusher. He went out on their, Syracuse's sixth play from scrimmage with a hurt knee, and we do not expect to see him play again. Again, you see a constant substitution by Syracuse because of the multiple formations that they run. Now, they run the same plays out of different formations. They just do a lot of formations 
to try to confuse the defense. And Chris, that was only Syracuse's second first down of the game, but still they have 14 points. Tim Washington, nice hole on the left side. As he burrows forward for five yards. Adam Lenore with the stop. Walter Reyes fumbled early on a pass catch. And his bad day got worse as he fumbled on this. They recovered, but the horrible part was he hurt his knee. He was able to hobble off. That happened around the nine-minute mark of the first quarter. But Ray is so important to this Syracuse offense, and they've been going with a hodgepodge of running backs ever since. Even more pressure now on R.J. Anderson to perform, and he holds on to it himself. And Anderson stopped about a yard short of the first down by Mike Lorello. Kevin McClee also in on the stop. Lorello is from Ohio. Yeah, watch the, watch attack the guard pool right there. See, now that should tell West Virginia defense not to even honor the fake back to the left. The ball's going to come to the right. They're not going to give the ball to the left if there's no lead blocker. There's nobody to block for them. They give it to the right. So don't go for the fakes. Follow the linemen. They'll take you to the football. Well, Lorello made a good play. Too soft here. Getting him from behind. Anderson holding on and... That's very close to the first down marker, but from here it looks like he didn't get it. And this is, you know, you don't have Reyes to hand the ball to. A huge loss for Syracuse. I think I'd go for it. If it's short, go for it. What do you got to lose? You're at home? If you don't get it, West Virginia gets very good field position as they will uh, take the measurement. Yes, uh, if, if, you, if you go for it, don't get it. Yeah, they just... Right, and uh, yeah. it's not a good decision. But I don't want to play passive. I mean, what do you, you go for it. You got an inch. Short. Tough call. It's like a couple of inches. Well, and Pac-Man's down there waving them, say, come on, go for it. <laughs> you better be careful what you wish for there, Pac-Man. Right. And they are going to go for it. Yeah. Why not? Five and four in the Big East, playing a team that's in the running for the championship. Go play passive attack. So he's seven of 16 going for fourth down this season, and they give it to Anderson. He sneaks it through for what should be the first down. Now he got a good spot, but he's easily across the yellow line. There you see the yellow line. Good job by R.J. Anderson getting low and getting behind his guys. They won the pad level battle there. Those big guys, Syracuse is big up front now. They look like their basketball team, their height. They got their pad level down there, and they were rooting and rocking and doing all the groundhog things need to do. And the groundhogs came through yeah. as Anderson picks up the first down, and the drive continues for Syracuse. He's gotten two of its three first downs in this game on this drive. Boy, they do have some tall linemen, don't they? Yeah. I like to see R.J. Anderson. I like him out in space. I like to see him move. He's been sort of the uh, prototypical Syracuse quarterback since Don McPherson played here. Almost stumbled down, but got it off to Washington. And Tim Washington loses the football, but they say he's down, so the ball will stay with Syracuse as we take it to Matt Weiner. Hi, right, Pam. Old Oak and Bucket update. Purdue and Indiana, and more from the Boilermakers. Kyle Orton, pump fake, got John Stanford behind the defense. Touchdown, 14-3. Standiford having an outstanding season for Purdue as uh, the Big Ten regular season. Big Ten season ends today. It's interesting because you know, some of these Big East teams with three games left to play, two after today. And Big Ten has been east. Stop Belton. Keep Belton running for another first down. And he fumbled the football. And then yeah, loses it. Yeah. Wow. So Syracuse having trouble holding on to the ball. Yeah, they, 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 they haven't blocked that fullback's little belly play all day, but they, Syracuse has got to hold on to the football. And that's turnovers will kill you. And West Virginians have outstanding year on creating turnovers. It's a good hole. Thump belt and hits the hole. But he loses the football right there. Adena comes in and knocks the ball out. It's a good job of blocking the thump, hitting it up inside, but Adena comes from the backside and knocks the ball out. I'll tell you, if you hit people like that, the ball's going to pop. The ball will pop out of there. Ryan King picks it up, but Adena, Lawrence Adena with the yeah, good hit, of with Lawrence. the hit, man, and and they are, that's the second turnover now for Syracuse. Now this might be not a bad opportunity for West Virginia to go up top after a turnover. Actually, that gives it to his horse, Quincy Wilson. Good play, 
by Christian Ferrara, though, the uh, defensive tackle. I really like Christian Ferrara, and I like how he gets into his gap and pursues down the line of scrimmage with penetration. Chase Quincy Wilson down. Defensive coordinator Chris Rippon really likes him, says he's a sideline-to-sideline -side guy, likes to chew up the blockers, and that time he showed the sideline-to-sideline -side ability by chasing down Wilson, which is no small task. No gain, so it's second and ten. Swing pass. Oh, Wilson has it bounce off his hands. And boy, West Virginia's lucky no guy in orange was there. Yeah, Quincy's hurting a little bit too now. He's limping off the field. Big Christian got him in the previous play. Well, Wilson a little banged up goes out. K.J. Harris comes in. We get word now that they have x-rayed the left knee of Walter Reyes. They are negative but it is still questionable as to whether or not he will return, so at least uh, yeah. no fracture was involved. No, but they don't, you know, those x-rays don't show the, the, the ligament damage, That's right. which is often the case with the knee. That's the scary part. Third and ten, and Quincy Wilson is not in the game. Marshall, time breaks down, and Marshall goes down in the arms of Rich Scanlon. The talented middle backer gets his second sack of the season. A good job. Running the zone blitz. Coach Chris Rippin, the defensive coordinator, calling the zone blitz. And Rick Scanlon's a big guy, 245 pounds. He becomes a pass rusher. He's coming around the corner. And again, initial pretty good protection, but Scanlon keeps on the rush and closes. Forces the punt by Todd James. And the last time he picked it up, he took it in for a touchdown, but he stays away from that one. And Syracuse will take over from the 25. Rick Scanlon, smart linebacker, good one too, but his team's down three. Welcome back to Syracuse. They're down 17 to 14 to West Virginia. Paul Pasqualoni has been jawing at his guys there well, on the he, sidelines. He just told Clayton what we talked about in the first quarter to catch the football. That's why you're back there as a punt returner. Run and catch the ball. Don't let it bounce because you're giving up 10 or 15 yards of field position. See all linebackers think alike. <laughs> punt returners right. catch the ball. Pascaloni, we played at linebacker U at Penn State for Joe Paterno. And where he talked about some of the running backs who were there when he was there, Lytle Mitchell and Franco Harris, and then Gino, uh, uh, John Capaletti, yeah. excuse me, came He's, in. So that's some talent. He said Capaletti, I didn't know this as a sophomore, was a starting cornerback for Penn State. Yep. He said, hey, this kid's a pretty good player. <laughs> he might be a good running back one yeah, day. He did, oh, he did all right. Yeah, you know, high school trophy guy. But he, he, I love that. That's details, Pam. Attention to detail on special teams. Do not let the ball bounce on the punt return. Run up and field the football. That's why you're back there. That's a good job of coaching, coach. Clayton with a 56-yard punt return. All right, Chris. Yeah, I, just, I love <laughs> that, though. That's good coaching. Man. Yeah. Tell them what to Details. do next time. For Syracuse with the ball down three with 4.08 left to go in the first half. Tim Washington will play for it. all the time in the world for Anderson going long for Jones. And what a play by Lance Frazier to knock it away. We go back to Matt Weiner. Hi, right, Pam, we've got more from Ann Arbor. Michigan strikes again, Navarre. Braylon Edwards, second time in this game they've hooked up. Edwards, with his 24th career touchdown, moves to third on the UM list all time, and it's 21-0 Michigan over in East Lansing. The Spartans also leading 21-3. All right, Matthew, so a good day for Michigan and Michigan State. Ohio State has not played a team with uh, weapons like that in a while. And, uh, Braylon Edwards and company getting it done. Washington with the pitch. And he goes down in a hurry. No gain as he is tackled down by Odena. That's, that's, that's a, a, a poor job of Washington reading the blocks. Right there, Donnelly had his guy, Odena, blocked inside. Then Washington cuts into where the block is being made. He got to run off the rear end of the blocker. If he's got position outside, run outside. You see it right here. Donnelly's out here doing a good job. He's got his guy inside, and he run right into the inside guy. So you can use the, the rear end as a key a lot. Oh, rear end's your friend. Remember that. Rear end is your friend in football. Not if you're a girl. That's right. Over the middle. That's a completion for a first down. Johnny Morantz, who caught a 75-yard touchdown pass in the first quarter, picks up 22 there. Yeah, that's a strike, too, by R.J. Anderson and staying in the pocket. Letting the pattern develop. Good job of protection. RJ's taking a seven-step drop. Well, now, seven-step drop, that's tell you the route's going to be over 15 yards. You're going to see RJ step back there, seven steps, wait for the clear out, delivers a strike to Johnny. Nice inside catch 
going in there with some courage and getting some positive yards. You can tell how deep the route's going to be by the depth of the quarterback's drop. So Morant coming up with a quality game so far. Moving the chains. He has two catches, one for a touchdown and one there. Anderson using his legs. And RJ is finally pushed out of bounds by Adam Jones. And not until he got up to the 20-yard line. A West Virginia player is down on the 40-yard line. And what a play by RJ. Oh, it's a great job. Quarterback draw. Washington on the lead block right there. Watch his cut. Nice cut right there by RJ Anderson. Then using his speed to get to the outside. Switching the ball to protect it from being hit from the inside out. Nice job of Jones right there laying off. Don't want to get a penalty. Got an injured player down though. Man, I hate these injuries. 32-yard run, by the way, is the longest of R.J. Anderson's career. The senior from Plainville, Connecticut. His previous career long was 20. R.J. wearing that number five. Of course, Donovan McNabb. Boy, they've had some good quarterbacks oh, up here, huh? Great quarterbacks. That was Donovan's number. Pam, too, the, the, the thing that R.J. has to do, and being a senior, when you lose your guy, Reyes, like they lost, he's got to take it upon himself, and he's done that this series so far, throwing strikes and runs. Nice. And he's picking up a lot of the slack. We'll be back with more from Syracuse as we check on the injured player. Lance Frazier, the senior defensive back from Delray Beach, Florida, number 19, is being attended to. Let's see how he got hurt. Here's Lance. He's going to lay out right here to try to knock R.J. down. His kind of legs flick over. A little fast. I mean, great effort right there, but you can see right there, he grabbed his back. Ugh. He is uh, helped to his feet, and this is a this is hard turf. This isn't that the field turf that everybody oh. loves. This is the old-fashioned stuff. It's pretty hard down there. Yeah. So Frazier is uh, helped off. Let's take a look at today's Aflac trivia question. We want to know who was the quarterback for West Virginia the last time the Mountaineers won a conference title. They're still in the hunt for the Big East Championship this season. So uh, think about who was in charge last time they won it. I think I played against him. All that's right. my hint. All right, that's I your think. Hint? All right, we'll let you know if you're right. Coming up. First and 10 now from the 21. Washington with a big old wall of blockers. And he was able to break free and get down close to another first down. Scott Jerko making the stop. Yeah, Adam Terry, I'll tell you, for a big fella at 6'8", 315 pounds, does a great job of running and getting out on the perimeter and clearing the way for Washington. I'll tell you, I love that when I see big men run. Watch Adam come from his guard position. Watch him pull around. Watch this block. There's the kick out. Right there. Washington's not going down. He's not going to be denied. He's going to keep his feet moving. Become the hitter rather than the hitty. Well, Terry, they love his potential. He's only a junior and he's just getting better. As that should be good enough for another Syracuse first down. There's Terry. 6'8. Man, these guys are just big. Tarulo is 6'6. Six, six. Another line mate, Jason Green, 6'5. One of the New York recruits who decided to stay home and play football with Syracuse. Will Allen's from New York State, right? Yeah, decided well, to go to Ohio State. Yeah, the Coach Pete was talking about how he's got to keep the New York players here in Syracuse. Want to break your heart to lose guys like Will Allen. In Washington has six carries already a career high for him as he goes in for Walter Reyes. Another carry. Washington tiptoes his way inside the tent and he picks up a couple. Him right there, they come out in what we call 22 personnel. Two backs, two tight ends, a motion on balance. That's when West Virginia has to shift their defense. An athletic trivia question. Who was the Mountaineers quarterback be last Major time? Harris, right? They won a title? Oh, we don't think so. No? The answer is Jake Kelchner. He was in charge ah. 10 years ago when they won the... They were not in a conference when Major Harris played, so no. that's kind of a, you know, an asterisk. <laughs> They were 11 and 1 under Kelchner, 7 and 0 in the Big East. Pitch it to Washington, and what a great play by Scott Jerko, who seemed to come out of nowhere to tackle him down at the five. This crowd at Syracuse was on its feet, Chris. They thought they had a TD. No, they, that's that's what they call the counter option. Now they start one way, they bring it back the other way, and you're going to see Jerko coming from his linebacker position, 
See, he's getting, initially, he's getting full, but when you play for West Virginia defense, you better be able to run and get to the football. And right there, Jerkler does a good job of running and making a great open field tackle because the receivers for Syracuse were blocking well downfield. He doesn't make a play at six points. 44 seconds left. Syracuse takes a timeout, and Jerko is a former walk-on. Uh, first year as a starter. Let's check in quickly now with Matt Weiner. Pam, coming up at the half, we'll get you everything you possibly need to know about the 100th meeting between Ohio State and Michigan, all Wolverines so far. Like the Big Ten, the SEC very much in flux, in particular on the east side. We'll tell you what Georgia and Tennessee are up to. Plus, the road from uncomfortable kid to Heisman candidate. The Eli Manning story. It's all coming up in the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report. All right, Matt, we will see you 44 seconds of playing time from now, and we get word that Ohio State has gotten on the board. It is now 21-6, to pending the extra points. That's the first time Michigan's defense has given up a touchdown in the first half at the Big House. So a big hole from which to uh, battle back, but Ohio State is on the board. Had a, on ESPN Classic this week, we had a big Michigan-Ohio State week. I did some of the uh, on-camera intros and got to oh. say your name. Oh, you, yeah, and I I'm, I'm on classic TV now. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's how old you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big series, though, for Syracuse. They need to go in at least tied or in the lead. They have a third and five, which you, and, and I would like to see. I don't know what the coach has in mind, but I, I like R.J. Anderson out on the perimeter to give him a chance to make a a play with his arm or his feet to give him that opportunity. He can do both, again, playing without Walter Reyes, who went out the sixth play of scrimmage in this game with a hurt left knee. So the Syracuse fans on their feet. They put three seconds back on the clock, 47 seconds left to go here in the half. This is third down. We got Morant right there now. He's 6'5". Oh, and Syracuse takes another timeout, Chris. Well, when you have a, a billion different formations, a lot of times that's the case. And they do use a lot of formations on this team. At one point last week against Miami, they were down near the goal line. They had a pro set. They ran something out of the wishbone and something out of the old T formation. A lot of stuff in this Syracuse playbook. And they are now out of timeouts. A lot of great players have played at Syracuse. We already talked about Don McPherson, Donovan McNabb. How about some running backs? Joe Morris, the great Jim Brown. Yeah, Jim Brown was special. Floyd Little, former Bronco, right? Great yep. player. Ernie Davis, on a number 44 is there. And Larry Zonka, wearing number 39, like Walter Reyes. Those are just the running backs who played here who have been really good and productive. And the shocking thing to me, Chris, these are the back-to-back 1,000-yarders, -back including Walter Reyes. You got Morris, you got Zonka. Jim Brown never had a 1,000-yard yeah, season Yeah, I know. We were, we were both shocked Boy, he's that. overrated, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but he had a lot of goals in lacrosse, I'll I tell think. You. <laughs> All-American, one of the best lacrosse players maybe ever, but obviously a terrific running back, but he never had a 1,000-yard season in college. Third and four, they're out of timeouts. They can get the first down without scoring a touchdown. And they're going in the air. Anderson looking for someone to clear. It's in the back of the end zone, but too high for Morant. Manny Cusimano, number 41, the tight end, was back there as well as the flag comes down. And here's a second flag. Well, Morant's getting a flag on the second one for mouthing off to the referee, which is and it's going to drive Coach P absolutely crazy. Romeo down there is grabbing him. Syracuse with four penalties for 30 yards so far in this game. He tried to tight end sneak play from the back side. R.J. Anderson rolled to his right. The tight end on the right kind of snuck and tried to hide behind people, but West Virginia stayed home and played good zone defense. All right, so you got a personal foul against the Mountaineers in a, in a st stupid mental error. I don't know if a better word how to put it from Morant. you got to let it go. Keep your composure. And both of those flags came after the play was over. Yes, we think so. Let's make sure as uh, the unsportsmanlike conduct was called for Morant, and who goes over and is talked to now by the coaches. Now, see, I don't think he wants to go see Coach, uh, Coach P right now. <laughs> He's staying clear of Pasqualoni. Yeah, yeah, look at him. I, I wouldn't go see him right now. After the play was over, we have a dead ball, personal foul, late hit out of bounds on the defense. That penalty is half the distance to the goal, automatic first down.
Here's a shot at the late hit. There's Morant going up. Pac-Man gave him a nice little whack. Pac-Man took the, the brunt of that one. I'll see how that And then he just gets a, he gets a, you know, I don't know about that call either now. He's just, that's football. All right. I mean, you're in the heat of the battle. You got to let him talk a little bit. Yeah, so that, the, the personal foul took a half the distance to the goal down around the three, and then you add the 15 yards, and it comes out around the 18-yard line after Morant was whistled for the unsportsmanlike conduct play. All right, I mean, you know, you're, you're in a game. You just got whacked out of bounds. You, you can't say anything to a guy. Remember, they called West Virginia for an excessive celebration penalty earlier on in this game, so they're not uh, putting out with much guff on this one. It's first and goal, even though they're out on the 17. Anderson dumps it off to Washington, and Tim Washington cuts inside and gets a close to the first down marker. The time is running out. Remember, they have no timeouts. Right. they got to get up and do something here. Down to football. you got second down. you got time to kill it. Anderson does just that. 21 seconds left to go here in the first half. It was the, 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 the reason for the penalty is, is that if it's against the, the defense, it's only half the distance to the goal line, so there's not any place else where you can take it any further. Then with the penalty of the unsportsmanlike line con conduct play, after the play, then you take it back 15 from where the penalty was marked off for West Virginia. So they do not offset. Right. All right, third and goal with 21 seconds left to go. This Big East officiating crew has been busy. It's been a cluttered first half. I believe another reason why they're not offsetting penalties, Pam, is one was after the play was dead. John Smith gathering his Big East officiating crew around him. First half that has taken long, a long time to play, mostly because of these stoppages. We got to get it right now. Remember, there's a lot on the line in this football game. Syracuse going for bowl eligibility. West Virginia still in a hunt for the Big East championship. Are you going to give us a little, give us a little chalk? So after the discussion, it's still third and goal from the eight. But no clarification for that delay. Syracuse down by three. Anderson. Lops one up for Moran in the end zone. He goes up to get it, but the ball is knocked away. There were a trio of Mountaineer defenders there, so fourth down with 15 ticks left on the clock. Now, that ball's late. Now, he, he doesn't have to throw the jump ball because he had Moran had him beat to the corner. You got a rifle one. See, he's throwing up the jump ball because automatically he thinks, I'm going to throw the jump ball. He predetermined to throw the jump ball. Moran had space right there to the corner of the end zone. He's got to throw a shot there. He's got him. But when you throw the jump ball, it gives... West Virginia time to get over there. King, nice vertical. Gets up. Don't throw the jump ball. Throw the bullet. He had a chance. And instead, King got a mid on it. So now a 25-yard field goal attempt by Colin Barber, his first attempt of this game. This will tie it up as we head into the locker room. And he does just that. So Barber knocks it home from 25 yards. Still 11 seconds left to go here in the first half. Very bizarre first half. I want, to, I want to go back to that because I do believe that R.J. had it in his mind before he let go of the ball to throw the high jump ball where Morant beat the West Virginia defenders to the corner of the end zone. He's got to throw that on the line because he had space to work. They had a chance, but I do think it was predetermined that he's going to throw the jump ball. Morant's a big guy. It's 6'5", 225. But by throwing it up in the air like that, got a, layer, a lot of air under it, and uh, three defenders were able to close in on Morant in the football. There's Morant right here. Now, he's going to have space to work out here in the corner of the end zone. 
See, he's got everybody beat inside. Right there, see, if you throw that ball on a line, he has it. You have all this space over here to work with. You threw it behind him. That gave the West Virginia defenders time to get there. Plus, the ball was lofted. He had that whole corner of the end zone. That's why I do believe it was predetermined jump ball pass. Morant with a 75-yard touchdown catch. That happened way back in the first quarter. R.J. Anderson throwing to him. We've had three lead changes already in this game, and now we are deadlocked again at 17. Morant's numbers, not a bad average. 48 and a half yards per catch, 75 of it on that one touchdown. So Brendan Carney in for the kickoff. Squibs it, picked up by Pac-Man. Adam Jones muffs it. And it goes back into the end zone. And Jones is tackled. The officials confer. And it is a touchback. Long as the off. Yep, he never had possession of it. That's the ruling. Woo, did West Virginia get away with one there? You know, I, I guarantee you that that whole sideline over there in the corner left oh, end zone seating as we're looking at it. The kick put it in the end zone, therefore it is a touchback. Yep. It is indeed not a safety, but the touchback. They said the kick went into the end zone right there. Jones mishandles the ball. He's trying to run it before he gets it. And he doesn't have possession of the football. It's a muff kick. So it goes into the end zone. It's a touchback. That's a good call by the officials. Because he never has possession of the football. It's a muff kick. The kick goes into the end zone. And he's not required to bring it out. That's a good call in front of a hostile crowd here at Syracuse. Kind of a weird first half comes to a close. A lot of action. It is tied up at 17 apiece at the half. Let's join Matt Weiner now for the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report. A lot of big games today, Matt. Hi, right. They're dusting off the Ben Schwartzwalder Trophy. That goes to the winner of today's game between Syracuse and West Virginia, the 11th time that these two teams have fought for that trophy. And this is a good sign. Walter Reyes, who went out on Syracuse's sixth play of scrimmage with a hurt left knee, he's got his hat back on. He's been walking around, walked out onto the field, so maybe we will see him in the second half. Pam Ward, along with Chris Spielman. It was a bizarre first half, but Syracuse held its own without a star running back. Yeah, and give credit to R.J. Anderson, the starting senior quarterback. When Reyes goes down, somebody's got to take charge. He has taken charge, not only with his arm, but his feet. And a couple of big special teams plays as well. On both sides of the football, we had some penalties and some other kind of quirky things in the first half. Three lead changes, which was fun, but we are all square at 17 apiece as we head into the second half. Heckman, Adam Jones, a 39-yard punt return in the first half. Now on the kickoff return team, there's that speed again as Pac-Man gets it up around the 35-yard line. Kellen Pruitt made the stop. Let's take a look now at our Pontiac first-half statistics. Syracuse uh, pulling even in the first downs. In these, except for the penalties, we got a lot of even numbers. Right there, Pam. Yep. Two turnovers. That's why West Virginia so far is in this football game. And this is a... a got to be the Quincy Wilson show a little bit this second half here. They got to get him off and get him off early. They just haven't gotten into the rhythm that they would like. They score and they score fast. West Virginia with their no huddle offense. Wilson had 63 yards on 14 carries in the first half, including a 23 yard run. Garvin, who scored on a touchdown on a reverse in the first half, that time West Virginia gets it snuffed out by Joyce Swittenberg. It was a nice job by McGill Anderson on, on, on a crackback block. This is a great job of him staying high, clearing the way for Garvin. Again, Garvin's a guy who's a game breaker. But in order you do this, you have to execute your plays. And see, he came back on a crackback and hit Sutterfield. Nice. Garvin scoring on a reverse from 20 yards out back in the first quarter. Gave West Virginia its first lead at 10 to 7. It was a six-year-old game, so second and four, K.J. Harris replacing Quincy Wilson in the backfield. K.J. gets it and is gotten immediately by Josh Thomas, who wraps him up, and he loses a couple. Follow the pulling guard. Follow the pulling guard. 
There's KJ hitting it up inside. KJ doesn't follow the pulling guard, decides he wants to go out on his own. There's nowhere to go. Thomas is right there playing catch. Follow your pulling guard running back. Thomas, a third year starter, tied for 10th Syracuse history for tackles for loss. Now he's there all by himself with that play. Third and six. Marshall gets it knocked down. Thomas, two big plays in a row for the senior from Orchard Park outside of Buffalo. Well, I mentioned to you, Pam, the size, the height of the offensive line. Now, Josh Thomas, a big defensive end, does a good job avoiding the cut block. Hands up. Beautiful play of keeping your feet athletic, of not getting chopped, and getting your hands up on a three-step drop. Outstanding. He is 6'7". So three and out as Todd James comes in. Marcus Clayton, who scored on a punt return in the first half, fields it and does a lot of running. Ball. Ball. Ball down again. I'm sorry. I start yelling ball. I got flashbacks. I see that ball <laughs> pump out of there. It's ball, ball, ball. We've seen it a lot so far in this game, but uh, he was able to hold on to it. That was a 50-yard punt and no return. Anthony Mims in on the coverage for the Mountaineers. I, I don't I don't mean to, to jump in on you, Pam, but I do see that ball. I get a little nervous. Watch here. Clayton's going to try to make something happen. Cut back. Got to protect the football. The ball's out right there. Got a good bounce, though. Good bounce. Got on it. Well, Syracuse fumbled the ball three times in the first half. Lost it twice. Got away with one there as the Orangemen start from the 10. They like this guy right here now. Tim oh. Washington stopped as soon as he got the ball by Grant Wiley. Wiley, who is uh, one of the semifinalists, one of the finalists, excuse me, for the Bronco Nagurski Award, which goes to the nation's best defensive player. Now, he is one of them. We've got to talk to Coach Duhlme. The offensive coordinator for Syracuse yesterday he said he'd be glad to see Grant leave West Virginia. In fact, he's going to give him a ride to the airport so he never has to face him again. Well, he is a terrific football player and had a great game last week in the win over Pittsburgh. And look who is back in, Walter Reyes. We have not seen him since Syracuse's sixth play of scrimmage when he hurt his left knee. X-rays were negative, so they think we can give it a go. Rashard Williams makes the catch. And picks up about three yards. Now, this, to me, I'm surprised. I mean, it, it looked nasty on the replay. And I, I just watched him right there. He's a little timid. He went up to block somebody, and he kind of got shy. You know, if he's shy, you got to get him out of there. You see the numbers. The negative one yard on the three carries. Also fumbled on a catch. Lost that fumble. Fumbled on a carry, but it was recovered by Syracuse. And as you Syracuse fans know, he just doesn't fumble. Well over 300 straight carries without losing one. Anderson over the middle and he completes it to Williams, but that is well short of the first down. A very short pass pattern. They needed seven yards and didn't get much. So well, both teams go three and out, Chris, on their first possessions yeah, here. I'm just watching Walter and he's got some questions, it looks like to me. Now, Syracuse doctors are great doctors. If they feel that there's his new was knee was loose any way whatsoever, he would not be in the football game. So it's a good sign because I know that the kids will come first. And then Carney in, fourth fun of the day. Adam Jones, the Pac-Man, gets it at the 30. Jukes turns around, reverses field, and he gets smacked. Kellen Pruitt, the linebacker, Chris, you like that one? Well, I like Kellen Pruitt, the linebacker, covering on the part right there because Adam Jones had a big return in the first half, and he broke Kellen Pruitt's ankles. But not this time, said Kellen. I'll come back and I'll close the gate in front of the ball. Bam! Welcome back to the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. We are knotted up at 17 apiece. Both teams uh, punting on their first possessions. And now West Virginia's second possession here in the second half as they are still in the hunt for the Big East Championship. Just that one loss to Miami, blemishing their record. And up the middle, that is Jason Colson, the freshman from Rochester, New York. Gets his first carry, picks up three. Now that's two plays in a row that Quincy's been on the bench. And I'm looking at him on the sidelines right now. He doesn't look hurt to me. We were told by the West Virginia folks that he because we did see him limp yeah. at the end of the second quarter that he was okay and was going to play for the week. Colson gets faked to his Marshall hangs on to it. He is pursued and Kellen Pruitt saw him and got him. 
Well, you know, you can take all the coverages you want, all the zone blitzes you want, but when it comes down to defense, watch Kellen Blura. See ball, get ball. <laughs> forget all the coverages, forget this read, that read. See ball, get ball. That's how you play defense. Let's define what see ball, get ball is. See ball, get ball. Go get it. That's it. Sit here back. Go get it. And that's what Kellen Pruitt did. Third and five. Marshall, time running out, and he walks it and completes it to Chris Henry for the first down. Marshall hanging in there to the last second. Picked up 21 when they needed five. It's a great job by Rashid Marshall. Hang, like you said, Pam, beautiful. Hanging in there, not panicking, waiting for the route to develop down the field, stepping up into the pocket, knowing he's going to get hit, delivers the strike, and it helps when you got a six-foot-five receiver, Chris Henry, making a catch. A good job by Christian Ferrara there to peel off of uh, Marshall and not pick up any uh, penalty. Colson breaking free. Jason Colson takes it all the way down to the 11-yard line before Anthony Smith corrals him. So that's a 26-yard gain as Wilson continues to uh, stand on the sidelines. Yeah, Henderson, the wide receiver, does a good job of springing that ball. Why? To block the downfield. That's a great tour, uh, cut back by Colson. There's Henderson getting a block in center field, and he, he's off to the races. Blocking downfield by receivers equal big plays. That was the biggest, longest run of this game, 26 yards for West Virginia. Colson standing in the backfield. Going right up the middle. So Jason Colson taking over for Quincy Wilson, and he's chewing up some yards. Colson is a freshman, as I said, from Rochester, as Wilson is a very talented cheerleader right now. I just brought Fofana in. It. Now, this is with her eye back formation. He's their lead blocker. Follow him. Usually, he'll take you to the football. Colson trying to finish it up, but he is stacked up. Nice play right there, big fella. Ferrara coming in and just got nasty and put somebody on a, a, a pancake. See, he pancaked the offensive lineman. He took that guy, drove him into the backfield. I'm right here, watch this play right here. On the snap of the ball. He's splitting a double team. He's getting skinny, and he presses the guard back in the backfield. Makes a tackle with the guard body. That, that's highlight film for defense linemen all over the world. That's how you play it. So Christian Ferrara with a big play, bringing up now the third and four. Colson gets it again for Fowler with the lead block, but he is tackled down from behind by the other defensive tackle, Lewis Gashlin. All right, I, I gotta, I gotta ask myself this question: You got a, a Dolph Walker candidate that's sitting on the 30-yard line, being like you said, a highly talented cheerleader. Now there's got to be a reason why he is not in the football game right now. I mean, he's the best goal line short yardage runner in the history of West Virginia, in my opinion. And we were told that there is nothing wrong with him health-wise from the West Virginia folks and the Mountaineers are keeping their offense on the field. Fourth and two from the three. They can score, or excuse me, can get a first down without scoring. Now Chris Henry's over there talking to the coaches. He's, he's lined up wide at the five yard line. See, he's looking back right here because he's got a height advantage at 6'5 over 5'10 right there. Now Chris is looking back at the coaches saying, hey, throw me a jump ball over Gregory. Flag is down. The West Virginia sideline decides what, what to do. It's a delay. It took too much time. We've well, got to have some clock awareness. You don't want to give that up now. Delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty remains fourth down. Now, the one thing that does do is it getting, well, yeah. Got to kick it now, right, yeah. Chris? Yeah. Went from I mean, you got to kick it anyway, but, seven. but I saw Chris over there. He wanted to jump ball. <laughs> he wanted to 6-5 on 5-10. Good call fourth down, obviously. Giving his kicker a little bit better angle. On the hash, so he's got to poke it to the right a little bit. And Brad Cooper from 25 yards out, trying to give the Mountaineers the lead again. And he does just that. So without Quincy Wilson, West Virginia with a good drive, settle for the three points, and the Mountaineers regain the lead, Chris. Watch Gaston, he's going to get skinny. He's going to split the double team. He's going to press, and bam! Coming down the line, pursuing, making a play. News Rivalry Week.
Brought to you by Campbell's Chunky Soup. Dinner that fills you up right. Make it Campbell's instead. And by Aflac. Ask about it at work. That is the language arts building on the campus of Syracuse University where they won't teach you Chris Spielman no, language, though. No. Yeah. Man. Have you heard some of your, gotten some of your definitions in, Chris? Uh, you getting excited. You're I, seeing I some because, stuff, man. Because people are hitting. Yep. And, and, and this is a physical, violent game, and I'm getting it, so I'm getting fed. <laughs> Cooper, who just hit the field goal to give West Virginia the lead, kicks off. Johnny Morant. Take it down at the 11 as we check back in with Matt Weiner. Pam Purdue has taken another step toward retaining the old oaken bucket in Bloomington. Kyle Orton, play action to John Standiford. Second time in this game, they've hooked up for a score. Standiford does most of the work, and the Boilers up 21-3. Northwestern looking to become bowl eligible in Champaign, and the Illini all tied up at 13 apiece. Wow, look at the day Jason Wright's having. 170 yards and two touchdowns already. He doesn't want this to be his last game, but it very well could be, and he's going out in style. Reyes, Walter Reyes gets the carry and picks up four. That's a nice cut by Walter. That's telling me his knee's okay. That is his first carry, Chris, since he went out on the sixth play from scrimmage for Syracuse in the first quarter. And really, as you've said, it looked like a nasty knee injury. Yeah. It got all bent. They uh, x-rayed it. The x-rays were negative, but, uh, you know, you, you wonder about ligament damage, and yeah, he's, apparently he's good to go. He, they, he's a tough kid. He went in there and taped an aspirin to it and said, I'm good. <laughs> he did it right back to good old number 39, and he runs into a pile that included Grant Wiley. Wiley's a linebacker that you've enjoyed for the last couple of years, Chris. Yeah, he's had, tough. Yeah, we've had a chance to do a couple of West Virginia games, and he's an instinctive and he's a leader, and I know Coach Rich Rodriguez really counts on him to hold people accountable to their play, and he knows he can count on him because he has credibility because every time he steps between the lines, he lines up and plays and plays well. And starting ever since he stepped on the campus at West Virginia was the Big East Rookie of the Year when he came in. And a great senior season. Blitz is on, and it's delivered towards Johnny Morant, coverage by Adam Jones. That's a good pass. Now, I think I think Morant could have had a shot of catching that football. I don't know if I like the route. I think he cut the route short because he threw a strike, and he threw it right where he needed to, high and outside, and you got a 6-5. Lay out for it. Go get it. I think something was wrong over there. Let's see if, he, if it touches hands. You know you know the rule. If you, oh. your receiver fingernail it, you got to oh. catch it. That's spoken like a defensive guy. Brendan Carney's in for his fifth punt. Lance Frazier is back. Picks up the block, a little burst, and pretty good field position for West Virginia. They'll take over on their own 44. Marcus Clayton, who scored a punt return touchdown on the punt return coverage, that time for Syracuse. West Virginia has the lead and the ball when we come back. Hey, I'm Stan. I'm one of the guys making hockey here at the factory. You know, there's a time when Made in America was just a fact. Soon it became a rallying cry for the whole country. It stood for pride, integrity, hard work. See, Made in America stamped on something, let people know that that was a darn fine product. Some people think hockey's made in Canada. The NHL on ESPN. Made in America, delivered on Thursday. The Lord of the Rings. Welcome back to Syracuse as the band plays on. The Orangemen trailing 20 to 17 here in the third quarter. Syracuse with a win will be bowl eligible. As they trail the Mountaineers who have kicked a field goal. They're only scoring so far here in the second half. Jason Colson continues in the backfield. He gets no gain, and we're still waiting to see Quincy Wilson again. Well, again, he, there's nobody that runs downhill like Quincy Wilson. He just runs through people. He's a powerful, built low to the ground, tree trunk leg back, and people just bounce off him. And yet, he's not playing this half. And he got nicked up a little bit in the first half, but they said nothing's wrong with him. Well, they retaped his ankle, but we have not seen him carry the ball. McCall Henderson. 
with some yards after catch. Picks up about five, but we'll take you back to Matt Weiner. Hi, Pam. Pittsburgh and Temple this afternoon. Panthers on top. The real question is when and if Larry Fitzgerald will get a touchdown catch. He's got one that's 17 straight games, extends his NCAA record. Meanwhile, Miami has finally scored a couple touchdowns, up 20 to 3 on Rutgers. All right, Matt, only a matter of time for Larry Fitzgerald to score. And if West Virginia needing Pittsburgh, definitely uh, Miami to lose if they want any shot at the BCF. PCS work out of the Big East. That can happen today. Colson catches it, runs by a would-be tackler and picks up the first down. Steve Gregory, I think, threw a no-hitter. Yeah. Yeah, Steve did throw the no-hitter. He's got to come up and, and not let the guy juke him. And people talk about always breaking down. Baloney, go make contact, initiate the contact. This is this is old, uh, this is what my belief as a defensive football guy. Don't break down. Go up and, and chest him up. See what you hit. Because if you break down with all that space, he'll make you miss. He did. Go make it. Go make the hit. Close and gets like that. Yep. And by break it down, you mean heading down towards his knees? Just, no, just don't break, break it down is when you stop. I, I think you go initiate the contact. And not don't stop and give a guy a two-way go. There's too much field out there. Go make take your shot. Don't be shy. Don't be passive. Take your shot. By doing that, he ran right by him as that is completed to Travis Garvin. And he is out of bounds. They're going to mark him short of the first down. They're, they're in a turbo offense now. Indy, turbo, whatever they call it, it's a fast offense. And, and, and I see the West or Syracuse guys coming back with hands on hips, especially the big orange pants. The big orange pants got hands on hips. The little orange pants don't have hands on hips yet. They're all right. The big ones do, though. And that front seven, the big guys with the hands on hips, the big pants, are the front seven really concerning Rich Rodriguez. Very respectful of them, but he's got them kind of on their heels. They're a little tired as Marshall sneaks forward to get the first down for the Mountaineers. It's a good job of surge by the West Virginia offensive lineman getting lower than the defensive line of Syracuse allowing Rashid to run the sneak and in. And there's Quincy Wilson, number three, continuing on the sidelines. Right here, see that, that tape wasn't as high. That tape's higher than it was to start the game. That's new tape. That's bad tape. Yeah, that's, that is bad tape. Anytime you get new tape, it's bad tape during <laughs> the game. About 65 yards, it's not carried the ball here in the second half. First down, Marshall looking up and heading. And it's picked off as Kellen Pruitt stepped in front of K.J. Harris. They had the route. They had what they wanted. They had a back on the linebacker, but Kellen Pruitt does a good job of running with, with K.J. down the sidelines. See Kellen right there? He's going to pick up his man. He's going to run with the running back out of the backfield. Has a great job of adjusting on the football, going up and catching it at its highest point. And that's West Virginia. That ball's underthrown, too, by the way. Rashid's got to put it out in front of him. That's a great job of adjusting on a football for a linebacker. Kellen Pruitt, nice play. That was a first turnover for West Virginia today. And that's the third interception for Pruitt this year. Kellen Pruitt played a solid defensive game. Sophomore from Clinton, Maryland with the pick. Washington gets the carry, and we get you back to Matt Weiner. Hi, Pam. We get you back to Ann Arbor, at least for this highlight. Ohio State on the move again. Buckeyes, not really built for comebacks, you wouldn't think, but Craig Krenzel to San Antonio Holmes for the second time, 28-14. Meanwhile, Michigan State at home. Jeff Smoker having a big day against Penn State, and the Spartans up 28-3. So Ohio State not known for that offense. A couple of big plays, and they are back in that football game that was by the way, Walter Reyes with that last carry. As a uh, defensive player, that is Hardy. Boy, they cannot afford to lose him. Jason Hardy is starting only because Fred Bluford got hurt, and then his replacement, Pat Liebig, got hurt last week. Yeah. So they are way thin, Chris, on the defensive end. They just count those guys to be in position. They don't ask them to make a lot of plays. They just do the best they can in there to clear it up for the linebackers and the safeties. On second and 10, that is completed to Jared Jones for the first down. 14 yard gain, Brian King making the stop. This is the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. Part of Rivalry Week presented by Pontiac. Rivalry Week, Chris. Chris Fielman and Pam Ward joining you. Big game for Syracuse as they try to get 
bowl eligible, and West Virginia still on the hunt to win the Big East Championship. Total yards very close, and the score would indicate that as Syracuse is down 20-17. Pitch it to Reyes, and Reyes! But a huge game, 33 yards for number 39. That actually looks all right now, the knee does. Got another injured player down on the field, but here's what they call the speed option. He's gonna pitch to Walter Reyes, he gets a good block, and King coming from a safety spot takes a poor angle, and Reyes says, what sore knee? I have no sore knee. I'm good to go. And he showed speed right there without a giddy up. There was no giddy up. So that was a 33-yard gain, longest on the ground today for Syracuse. We'll check on the injured player and get you back to the Carrier Dome. In the back in Syracuse, where Mike Lorello is the latest player to get hurt. Yeah, his foot gets stuck in the turf right here. See that right foot gets kind of bent backwards. That's not a very oh, that's nasty. But he tries to get under the block, and when he's playing this turf, that sometimes happens. Well, Stump Belton he blocked him, and that one is complete. Zinged in to Joe Donnelly, the tight end's first catch of the day, and it's another Syracuse first down. I like R.J. Anderson. I tell you, he's taking control of this football game. He's got his buddy back, Walter Reyes, but I tell you, this game has been his. Very accurate, not only sitting in the pocket, but also he has the ability to throw on the run, a nice bootleg, and finding the open receiver, setting his feet, delivering a strike. Nice. Good numbers for RJ. 11 of 17 for 177 yards. I'm sorry, 11 of 15 for 177 yards, and a touchdown. And right up the gut is Thump Belt, and a fullback. Picks up about six, and Thump, great nickname for a fullback, not because of his football ability, but his mom, apparently, when she was carrying him, said that he was a kicker. He was a thumper. <laughs> While she was still, you know, waiting for Thump to come out, the nickname stuck. He, he's, he's thumping running the ball. He hit Ernest Hunter, the defensive end, made a good hit on him. And Ernest Hunter ends up adjusting his helmet after the play. <laughs> after getting thumped by Belton, he takes a break. Belton's six foot, 245 pounds from Charlotte, North Carolina. Pitch. And the ball goes to Reyes. And he picks up a first down. So Reyes running well after hurting his knee in the first quarter. Rivalry week presented by Pontiac continues. 7.45 Eastern time on ESPN. The Crimson Tide take on Auburn in the Iron Bowl. You can also catch that on ESPN HD. Call your local cable operator, DirecTV, or the Dish Network. And at 7 Eastern, South Carolina tries to get bowl eligible as they play Clemson on ESPN2. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. I, tell, I, I really like Syracuse right now. They, they're they able to run the option, Pam. And that's tough to do. When you have that capability, that puts a ton of pressure on a defense because it's a whole different type of mentality you have to have as a defensive team to stop it. Just another element of this very offense. Reyes carrying people Grant Wiley took a little bit of a ride for a four-yard game for Reyes. Again, that's a play where they start out with 22 personnel. That's two backs and two tight ends. They bring Donnelly off the motion they line him up and he motions across to an on balance line they pull the backside guard you have a fullback and the backside guard leading up to the hole it's a lead isolation play but you have two lead blockers as opposed to one that's a good little play now good four yards now second and six it goes right up the middle to greg hanoyan Yet another fullback, so really spreading the ball around in the run game, picks up four. Well, what, what's happening is the running backs are delivering the hits on the linebackers. Nick Romeo right there got on Lenore, and Lenore got him, but he went for a ride because he's trying to fight off the center. Romeo, 291 pounds, plus he's catching another fullback at 270 pounds. So that's what, 561 pounds? I can't believe I just figured that out. <laughs> wow. That's good. A lot of orange guys, big orange guys. Belton is the running back. And Anderson keeps it himself. And RJ. Going down, Leandre Washington making the stop as they fail to convert that third and two. Good job of coming back, reading the quarterback draw by Leandre Washington. And that, to me, that one took a little bit too long to develop. You got a lead blocker. You got to get on his hip as quick as you can. That time, RJ 
set it up a little bit too much, tried to sell it. It was late running that draw. Third quarter comes to a close. R.J. Anderson came off favoring his right arm. The throwing arm, that not good. We're coming back with fourth quarter action and a field goal. plays that we have seen in this 20 to 17 lead for West Virginia. R.J. Anderson came off favoring his right arm, but he appears to be okay as the uh, training staff looked at him. He's talking to the guys upstairs and Colin Barber coming in for a 29 yard field goal attempt. He was hit from 25 back in the second quarter. And this one will tie it up. And Barber misses it. I'll tell you why he missed it. The timing was screwed up because the snap was bad. The snap was way inside. Dave Jared Mata. Jones had to move his hands to the inside. Thus, he was a little late getting to the football, and they pulled it. Watch, watch the snap. Watch his hands. See, his hands had to go back behind him. He hesitated a little bit, plus the laces worn out, Finkel. The laces were not pointing out. The laces were in. That's, of course, an Ace Ventura of course. reference. But that, the, the snap was bad. Look, at that's a great job of getting it, but he didn't have time to get the laces out. He kicks the laces. That's why it looks so nasty coming off, because he kicked the laces. Dave D'Amato is the long snapper, usually very reliable. Look who's back in, Quincy Wilson. Gets the carry and gets a big old fat game. Yeah, he's limping too, that's why he's been out. But I'll tell you, man, he's a low. And you saw him, he got about 15 yards down there and he was limping. He's limping off the field now. That's why he's been out. That extra tape. But give him credit for being in there. A lot of leg injuries, Pam, on his turf. And see, now he's bursting through the line. There's not a lot of guys catching him. Diamond Ferry catches him at the end there. But that's pretty good for running on a bad, bad wheel. Not bad at all as he gets 41 yards. Jason Colson comes in and gets the carry as we go back to Matt Weiner. Hi, Pam. We've got a uh, development in Ann Arbor. Craig Krenzel back to pass, releases the ball, and then takes the full brunt of Norman Hewer, all 282 pounds of them. Krenzel has left the game with what appears to be a shoulder injury. Ohio State is driving behind Scott McMullen. Oh, so uh, Scott McMullen, a lot of people down Columbus way like him anyway. So now his ball game is Olsen. Stopped a couple yards short of the first down. Troy Swittenberg on the stop. And Quincy Wilson, when he runs for 100 yards, good stuff happens for West Virginia this year. And as you see, he has 104 yards so far today. So we'll see if they can make it 6-0 when Quincy hits the century mark. Yeah, that's, that tells you the running game. You know, it's a spread offense. They love to run the football. Third and three for the Mountaineers with Wilson on the sideline. Change the play. They change the play. The clock winding down, and Marshall was forced to take a timeout with two seconds left on the play clock. Yeah, they got to make a decision. That's not on Rasheed Marshall. That's on this man right here and the guy in the yellow shirt. The guy in the yellow shirt's got to help him. But instead, West Virginia has to burn a timeout. They'll talk it over, have a third and three when we come back. West Virginia burning the timeout. The noise level increases on a third and three. Quincy Wilson sitting behind Big Mo Fafana in the backfield. Quincy gets it and he bounces off one tackle and keeps his leg moving, but is unable to break through. Lewis Gashlin coming in at the first hit. Now, Lewis Gashlin's a boy dog warrior, along with his brother Ferrari in there. He got skinny, he split the double team and comes in and just makes a shot on Quincy Wilson. And Quincy, of course, is just an animal. Bounces off of him in great effort, but good swarming defense by Syracuse Orton. He picks up a yard, Chris. It's fourth and two, and West Virginia is going for it. Keep your eye on, on the guy right here. This will tell Quincy. He'll tell Quincy where to go. If this hand's see, let's tell him to run the play. Marshall puts it back to Wilson, who can't hold on. He fumbles it, and Syracuse will take over. Kellen Pruitt in the thick of things. 
as they make that call for us on fourth and two. What do you think? Well, the difference is that West Virginia is not an option team where Syracuse is an option team. I prefer you go something that's your butt, bread and butter play. Play action, bootleg, Quincy on a toss, Quincy downhill, not Quincy getting a pitch. He's not used to getting a pitch. But they felt maybe they had something with the option. And, and they didn't have it. It's a great job by Syracuse of rallying. Big fourth down stop for the Orange Man. Uh, Pruitt continuing on a good run. Yeah. Well, he played very well in that 17 to 10 loss to Miami last week. And remember, he's got an interception today and uh, came up with a big hit that time. So the ball goes over to Syracuse. Down by three, plenty of time left. Anderson on the roll, and it is knocked down by Jason Hardy, the defensive end who left with an injury, and obviously he's back in and playing all right. It's a good job by Jason of getting in the throwing lane because they had something now. Cusimano was open, and he had room to run because they ran three guys off. It's good. Walter Reyes with a hand fake. Nice ball fake. Cusimano's open. Hardy does a good job of playing that football. Nice. Good athletic move for the big man. 6'3", 280-pounder from San Mateo, California. Hardy's a junior. Oh, Anderson almost tripped. Got it. He does as he goes down deep for Morant, and Brian King closes. But here come the penalty flags. Yeah, they underthrew him. He hit him on a sluggo. What's a sluggo? Slant and go. Sluggo. And he was wide open. He underthrew him. They didn't look and lean. They just ran into him. They tackled him. And Morant stays down at the 18-yard line. You see it right here. This ball's underthrown, but it's a slant and go. Morant ran the slant with a pump fake, and they got him just before he got there. Close call. He's got him, man. I mean, he's got him by three yards. All he's got to do is put the ball out in front. You know, it's not bad. It's interference, though, but it was proper technique of trying to strip the arms down. But he got there a little early because he could not look back for the football. Then he couldn't look and lean to use his body. So he just had to go tackle the arms. Just got there a little early. See, when you look and lean, you know when the ball's coming. When you when you just lean and you tackle the arms, you can't see the ball. So you take a chance of tackling them early. And that is exactly what they called Adam Jones for doing as Morant stays down on the turf. Morant caught a 75-yard touchdown pass from R.J. Anderson in the first quarter. Yeah, I don't mind that penalty if I'm West Virginia. I mean, it, it, and... This is where I think pass interference needs to be changed to college football. I mean, you get, what, a, a 5 or 10-yard penalty there, a 15, whatever it is, to, to get the ball at the spot because if the guy's wide open. All you got to do is tackle him. It's no problem. Line up and play. In the NFL, they'd have it at the 18-yard line, but instead it is back on the 49 of West Virginia. Yeah, that was a nice call, though, to slant and go. I mean, he had Moran on the three-step corner, jumped the three-step, and he's off to the races. Did a good job of hustling back, though. Adam Jones of preventing the touchdown. Like, so you get beat, just tackle the guy because right. it doesn't hurt you in college football. Brings the ball up to the 49 as Morant will take a breather. Anderson, another option. Reyes. Kelton walking in front of him. He's up about six as we send you back to Matt Warner. Hi, Pat. We told you Craig Prenzel left the game in Ann Arbor with what appears to be a shoulder injury. So Scott McMullen in, and well, Scott McMullen looking pretty good. Finds Santonio Holmes wide open for a big game here. McMullen, 4 of 6 on a 93-yard touchdown run capped by Lydell Ross. Two yards, and we're tightened up to a seven-point game. So the Buckeyes getting right back into it after falling behind 28 to seven. Yeah, they're not going to quit. That's yeah. it. Anybody knows Jim Trestle is uh, talking to Coach Pearson. Shard Williams gets the pass and stops. Looks a little bit short of the first down. Stopped by Scott Jerko. But how about, like, maybe you're defending Santonio Moss? Yeah. The guy's got two touchdowns and then was wide open on that play. Yeah. And Santonio Holmes is the guy that took Antonio over for Holmes, Drew Carter. Yeah, but I mentioned about Ohio State not quitting. I was talking to Dick McPherson, former head coach here at Syracuse. You had Jim Trestle on his staff, and he said, Chris, don't, don't worry about it, Chris. Jim Trestle will get those guys coming back. And it's nice to have a Scott McMullen coming out of the bullpen if you're Ohio State. But third and one here. This is football, baby. Line up. Who wants it more? On third and one. And movement. Ah. Boy, I think the Syracuse guys moved a little early. <laughs> Much to Chris's shit, Oh, man. I want to see smash Execute, him. right? <laughs> yeah. And you see who's in. Oh, I want to see who got the... Mm. 
I, I, I'll tell you what happened, Pam. Everybody gets a little anxious there. West Virginia was trying to time the snap, but they had good body control, so they didn't go across the line of scrimmage, but they tied the line of scrimmage. 12-12. 12-12, okay, we got that. But the point being <laughs> is that they came up and they're attacking the line of scrimmage so that the big orange pants get a little jumpy and they don't want to get driven back, so they jump before the snap. The third false start called against the Orangemen today. So from third and one to third and six, a new strategy. Anderson sips it, and a good hit by Lance Frazier. Jared Jones unable to hold on to the football. Yeah, I tell you, uh, R.J. Anderson, nice for hanging in there and throwing a strike. And you got to make plays. Hey, if you want to be in the Big East running for the championship, make plays when you have a hard a chance to make a play. That time, did not hold on to the football. That's a strike. And, and I think he would have dropped it even though if Frazier wouldn't have hit him. It looked like it was well on its way out of his arm, so that false start penalty hurting. And punting for the sixth time is Brendan Carney. Frazier lets it go. It takes a West Virginia bounce. And the Mountaineers will take over at their 17-yard line. We got West Virginia with the football, and we come back to Syracuse. ESPN 2's Rivalry Week, presented by Pontiac. Vote for this week's ultimate Pontiac high-performance play at ESPN.com slash Pontiac. And in part by Wendy's Wild Mountain Chicken and Wild Mountain Bacon Cheeseburger. It's better here. We are back on a beautiful day outside, but we are inside the Carrier Dome, the only dome stadium on a campus in the United States. And Mountaineer fans have uh, made their way up from... Morgantown hoping to see their team stay in the hunt of the Big East title race. First down, Marshall up top, going long for Chris Henry, and he comes back and gets it. And then Henry is tackled down at the 40. Rich Scanlon, the middle backer, coming all the way down to make the stop. Great job by Chris Henry coming back at the last second. Bad job by Syracuse defensive backs not having an awareness of where the football is. See, they're turning. They're just turning and running. He just put, er, stop. <laughs> Come back. And put that ball away, young man. Scanlon, nice job of hustling from your linebacker spot. Big but, game, Chris, for Chris Henry. Four catches, 118 yards. You've got to have an awareness of where you are in the football field and awareness of the receiver. You can't be wild man out there playing control of your feet. First and 10 from the 45. Colson gets the carry gets a couple yards as we send you to Matt Wine. Pam, conventional wisdom was the key to this Michigan game might have been John Navarre. Navarre, 17 of 27, 218, two touchdowns, and this pick. Chris Gamble had it. Buckeyes couldn't do anything with it. They have punted it back to the Wolverines. All right, so they had their opportunity. John Navarre, all those passing records of Michigan, the fans still don't love him there. They retrieve after they can't convert. Interception is Paul Henderson grabs it and steps out close to the first down marker. See, that should no way should that be a 10-yard play. I'll tell you why. He catches the ball at five, and as a corner, you're playing off. Fine, you're playing off. We understand that. But when that ball's thrown in the air, you come up and you deliver a shot. You don't let the receiver de deliver a shot on you. You've got to eliminate yards after catch. Now, I get McQuell does a good job of putting the shoulder. That's the second time today we saw him get the first down on a hitch. Three catches for McQuell today. He had a team-high five catches for 93 yards last week against Pittsburgh. Before that, he'd only caught one pass in five games, so they're starting to find number 83 again, and it's working well. That is indeed a first down. Wilson, bang, right at the line of scrimmage. Kellen threw it again. Look at the quarterback numbers in comparison. Marshall, the only one with the uh, turnover. Pam, I bet if we put the stats up there, everything is just, just like about that. I mean, completely even the way these teams are playing. And you know what I love about this football game? Is that they're, they're, they're whacking each other. I mean, they're hitting it, and they're, and they're bringing it. It's, and it's fun to watch because these kids are playing their hearts out. And it's a celebration of youth and college football, man. It's awesome. Both teams are plenty to play for on second and ten. Wilson. 
this time picks his way through a hole somehow. James Weish made the stop at seven more yards for Wilson, well over the 100-yard mark. Now he's look, he's no way as shifty as Barry Sanders. He's not in the same universe as Barry Sanders. But when you talk to guys who played against Barry Sanders, I played against him once. You do not tackle that man on his legs. You hit him right around the neck. Hit him high. Don't hit him low, because if you hit him low, he just runs through you. 107 yards for Wilson on third and four. Many here in attendance getting to their feet. K.J. Harris has replaced Wilson in the backfield. Yeah, the, the, the coach Bird, the yellow shirt coach, changed the play, and Rasheed didn't like it. And a timeout is called. Yeah, see, Rasheed, if you're going to change the play, he's going to go say, if you're going to change the play, give it to me earlier so I have time to change the play. West Virginia with just one timeout left. That is the receivers coach, Steve Bird, Mr. Yellow Shirt, talking things over with Marshall. We'll be back. West Virginia with the three-point lead over Syracuse. And more to Chris Fieldman joining you now. Third and four after the West Virginia timeout. Woods is picked up. Marshall locks one up in the end zone, and that is caught for the touchdown. Chris Henry from 24 yards out. What a throw. He threw it to a spot. He knew and had confidence that Chris Henry would beat Satterfield or on, a, on a takeoff. He just throws it up right to the corner of the end zone. Henry beats his man one-on-one -on -one because he looked back. Now he doesn't look and lean. Touchdown. Great call, great catch, great throw. Just perfectly placed into the arms of Henry, 6'4". Brad Cooper in to add the extra point. Give West Virginia the 10-point lead. And by far the largest lead of the game. I said Satterfield, I meant Swittenberg. Troy Swittenberg, number 18. Yeah, Troy peeked in the backfield a little bit as his guys running by him. And as soon as he peeked in the backfield, Chris Henry ran past him. See Rashid get his feet set, steps forward, throws the ball, gets it up in the air, knows he's got a 6'4 wide receiver running down. Watch Wittenberg, look back. See, look back right there, and he knew he got beat. A little stutter and go got him. A perfectly thrown football. Good job of Chris Henry being aware of where he's on the football field. Yeah, he said, I don't want to do that, coach. I've done that many times. Coach Rodriguez, I hope you do it many more. That was Chris Henry. Second in the country, yards per catch, and he's upping that today. As he scores on that touchdown, he leads this team now with eight touchdown catches. The first three catches he had this year went for touchdowns. He's got a knack. He's a big, tall kid that has great body control. That time he ran a nice little route. He gave him a little stutter step. Swittenberg jumped on the stutter step, and then he throws it to the corner of the end zone. Perfectly thrown ball by Rashid Marshall. Well, Marshall now with his second touchdown pass of this game. He hit Torrey Johnson back in the second quarter, and the lead is ballooned to 10. Morant takes it out, six or seven yards deep in the end zone, and he shouldn't have done it. Jay Henry leading the special teams charge on the tackle. We got more college football coming your way. Rivalry week presented by Pontiac continues. It's hard to say, Chris, don't laugh. <laughs> 745 <laughs> Eastern on ESPN. We have the Iron Bowl, Auburn and Alabama. You can also get that on ESPN HD. Call your local cable operator, Direct TV or the Dish Network on ESPN2, Clemson and South Carolina, the Battle of South Carolina. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Okay, Smarty Pants, hey, you well, say. Hey, you're the skill position player. Oh, yeah. I'm just the lineman of this crew well, team I've, right here. I've been watching it all day. <laughs> I believe we, fun to watch, but tough to say. Flag is down. Joe Donnelly might have gotten up early from his tight end spot. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Yeah, penalties have, uh, penalties have hurt Syracuse. So Donnelly wants to get up on, get off and come down on a down block or release on a bootleg. Jumped early. You can tell by his angle. Look at his right foot coming down toward the line of scrimmage. Four false start penalties now against Syracuse. They have a grand total of seven. It has not been the prettiest of football games. Reyes gets the pitch. Tries to get around Lenork, and he does. 
There's a little burst of speed. Brian King has to make the stop, but it's an eight-yard gain for Walter. And Brian King was thick on that hit now. He brought noise. I mean, when I can hear through my headphones up here <laughs> in the press box, that's noise. That's a good hit. Anytime you hear noise, that was almost a woo, but it, the crowd didn't give him a woo. That noise. Maybe if he was a Syracuse defender, they would have given him one. Yeah. King had a great game last year against Syracuse, a career high 14 tackles. And he had a nice big blue tackle there. Now second and eight. And North coming on the blitz. And then it all just falls apart around Anderson, who goes down around the 10. We have another update. Michigan, Ohio State. Matt Weider. All right, Pam, we told you Ohio State got the interception. They punted it back to the Wolverines, and Michigan marches right back down the field. Running on that number one rush defense, Chris Perry, 15 yards. He has 141, 35-21. So the Ohio State defense, Chris, we are not used to seeing that as another player is down on the field for this, West Virginia. Uh, this is something we've seen too much of today. And we get word it's Ben Lynch, yeah. the big nose tackle. That's a guy, yeah. I just want to say, Pam, that's yeah. a position they can't afford to lose because he's the... He's the guts of that defense because he takes a lot of shots playing nose tackle and it takes a special individual to play in there. Ben's right here to see what happens to him. He comes down. Looks like he gets his leg caught up in, in the mess right there. There's his head going down in the ground. There's a lot of, a lot of weight on that pile. Well, that's a good sign, though, as he walks off under his own power. Big guy from Oil City, Pennsylvania. Economics major, so he's a smart guy. But all right, those nose tackles get no glory, but they 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 take on blockers, they clog things up, and you know the guys behind him get the tackles. It's a tough job. I played with three great nose tackles in my career: Jerry Ball, Mark Spindler, and a guy named Ted Washington. And they're the biggest reason why I was able to play as long as I didn't have a little bit of success in the NFL was because of the play of those guys. And you mentioned that Jerry Ball, who I remember just being a big guy. Yeah. Was was fast, athletic. Well, he could move. And, yep. and, you know, he was about 325, Ooh. 330 pounds at 5'11". Oh, man. But he could get up the field. Man. Great leverage. He was tough to block. That is almost as wide as he was tall. The boy was a heck of a player. Third and 12 now for the Orangemen. Wiley coming on the blitz. As is Jerko, and that means that Anderson had to fire it early. Great pressure by Jerko from Morgantown. Stayed home to play his college football. Nice little zone blitz call there by West Virginia. You'll see Wiley come and you'll see Jerko come around. See, there's Wiley inside his little X game right there. He missed the block. Gives RJ no chance to get the ball off. And good awareness by RJ to get rid of the football so he didn't take the safety. Brendan Carney punting for the seventh time. Adam Jones, the Pac-Man, one of the best punt returners in the country, gets spun around and falls down at the 48 as we head back to Matt Weiner. Matt. All right, Pam, let's check in with the other OSU, Oklahoma State, taking on Baylor. Back come the Bears. Jonathan Evans, touchdown. It's 24-21. Baylor trying to salvage something out of their season. It would certainly help out. Syracuse down 10 here, and West Virginia has the ball. Again, Syracuse is 5-4 and four on the season, 2-3 and three in the conference. They need one more win to get a bowl-eligible spot. They have quite a ways to go now. K.J. Harris gets the carry. Picks up a minimal game. Well, anytime that West Virginia lines up in the eye backs, they have yet to throw a pass from that formation. Syracuse has got to start saying rabbit, 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 which alerts everybody to play run. Formation tips it off. Harris goes to the sidelines. And Jason Colson stays in. Colson came into this game with only 14 carries on the season. Not quite a bit of work. Wilson's ankle a little dinged up and picks up about two on that carry. Rick Scanlon now with 10, make it 11 tackles for the senior from New Jersey. And Rich takes him down now. I mean, they, they don't they don't go forward when Rich hits him. They go sideways or backwards. He's a tough guy. Take a look at Rich right here, middle linebacker. Good job of coming back. And that's Josh Thomas coming in. Rich coming over the top. But Josh Thomas has played a nice football game. 
11 tackles for Scanlon, has a 3.7 grade point average. He's a pre-med guy. Not bad. And that's knocked down. There's Josh Thomas again, Chris. Yeah, his line's going to be today uh, three block shots because he gets his hands up in the throwing lane on a three-step drop. That's well-coached and well-executed defensive end play. Anytime you see the short drop, you stop your pass rush, you get your hands up. Watch Josh come here. They'll try to cut him. They should try to cut him on a three-step to get his hands down. See the offensive tackle, he's taking him back into the quarterback. He's got to cut him to get his hands down. You can't stand up and take him back into the quarterback. Todd James, who's been terrific at downing the ball inside the 20, almost gets one there, but it trickles into the end zone for a touchback. It's got great touch on the ball for a kicker. Sunday night, Steve Spurrier returns to the Sunshine State. We got the Redskins and the Dolphins. 8.30 Eastern Time. It's also available on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator, DirecTV, or the Dish Network today. Begin your evening at 7.30 with NFL Primetime presented by Miller Lite. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And, and Chris Spielman's brother, Rick, is the uh, personnel honcho down yeah. there in Miami. And you can't call them after they lose. No, I can't. Just, I, I, you have to wait. I'm trying to get a comeback from it, too. <laughs> Big game coming up on ESPN tomorrow night. Let's see if Syracuse can come back. Good way to start it. Jerry Jones for the first down. Picked up 13, his third catch of the day. Well, we got a two-possession game rocking right now, so they got to get moving here. They understand that. They got to be in a little bit of a hurry-up mode. Syracuse has three timeouts left, but still, we've got 6:27 to go in a two-possession ball game. They know they can't take their time. Jones has now caught a pass in 17 straight games. He had not, he'd only caught one in his first 18 for Syracuse, but his last 17 games, he's caught at least one. Become an integral part of this offense, as is Walter Reyes. Reyes, breaking free. He gets by Pac-Man. It's a foot race, and Walter Reyes, bad knee and all, scores a touchdown. Watch Donnelly, the tight end, number 40, will get a block right there to spring Walter Reyes. It's a poor angle by King. He misses the tackle right there, another poor angle. Adam Jones, Pac-Man misses the block, and Walter Reyes taped an aspirin to it, took a tough pill, was playing on a bad knee, and playing for Syracuse University for six points. That was a 67-yard play as Reyes gets Syracuse within striking distance of this lead. Missed it. Missed it. But Barber misses the extra point. Colin Barber missed a 29-yard field goal earlier in this game, and Paul Pasqualoni's face says it all. What's the problem? See, look, snap and hold. There's a snap. There's a hold. That looks good. He just pulled it. Now, remember, he pulled his last field goal, too. And that's what, yeah, that's, he's saying that, that's good. Well, they apparently they see it different. Man, so, you, yeah, you, you, four points off the board, Pam. Yep. Four points, four points left on the field. That means, and the four points would mean we'd have a tie ball game. That extra point would have made it a field goal right. distance. So, yep. boy, a great effort by Syracuse on that last drive. And this is uh, Colin Barber earlier in the fourth quarter. That was a 29-yard attempt. Yeah, I, I won't blame that one on Barber because the snap was bad and timing was messed up. But that one, you got to make an extra point now. Especially when, you, when you're in a close ball game in the, in the, in the conference at home. It's got to be out of. But instead, Syracuse is down by four points. You have to get the ball back and get a touchdown if you want to have a shot now. They got 39 rock and rolling though. They're in this. Adam Jones, the Pac-Man, gets it and takes it up to the 26-yard line, and that is where West Virginia takes over. One more time, let's look at Colin Barber's extra point attempt. Kick. 
Yeah, 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 you know, that looks good to me because these extend all the way up. See that? That extends all the way up. That, that might have been good to me. Uh, you know, they got the better angle. And coming into this game, that is actually the first extra point that Barber has missed all season. He was 25 for 25 coming into this game. And this is that crucial extra point. Jason Colson done some nice things filling in for Wilson who's banged up Diamond Ferry making the stop today missed PAT missed field goal as you mentioned Pam his first miss of the PAT of the season you know, they left four points out on the field it's a good West Virginia football team and that is the deficit Colson has career highs now 12 carries for 54 yards and he is bottled up on second and five by Kelvin Smith. Nice kill by Kelvin Smith in there. And, and uh, again, the linebackers cannot make plays at the line of scrimmage. If they're not getting good defense attack play. And they've been getting it all day for Ferrara and Gashley. Timeout, Syracuse has three, West Virginia one. Third and three, huge play. They're going for a big one. Up top to Henry, and Henry catches it in stride scores the touchdown. What a call on third and three. And what a throw. And that was a hurry up. That's turbo offense. That's indie offense, whatever you want to call it. When you're playing zone defense, you're deep as the deepest. And he's just running by people. And all Rashid doing is throwing it up, letting him run underneath it. See, they're playing zone. Playing too deep, but the safety takes a bad angle. And he just runs by Diamond Ferry. He's off to the race. Put that ball away, though. Put that ball away. But that's a great throw and a great catch. And a great call by Rich Rodriguez. All right, as Brad Cooper comes in for the extra point, it's two touchdown catches now for Chris Henry. That was 67 yards. Cooper smacks on the extra point. And, well, you're right. Rasheed Marshall, not known as a guy who can throw the ball very well, he's thrown two great touchdown passes here. Are you on the Chris Henry is having a career day. Six catches for 209 Man. yards. That's the career day and two scores. And boy, Chris, that was just a beautifully thrown by a ball by Rasheed Marshall, that last one. That's a great route. And, and if you don't disrupt the downfield takeoff by a wide receiver, you just let him run by. It's, it's, it's easy. It's pitch and catch. It's like they're like doing seven on seven. That's why you have pads on to at least slow down the receiver and disrupt the timing of the route. Chris Henry sat out last year and has come on this year uh, like gangbusters. Now with nine touchdown catches on the season, two of them today, and that extends the lead now to 11 points. And the Syracuse faithful just about a minute ago or a minute playing time ago were thrilled because they thought they had gotten to within a field goal of the lead, but then you get the mixed extra point, and then on third and three, a 67-yard touchdown play, and the lead all of a sudden is 11. Johnny Morant took it out last time with his kick this deep. He's doing it again. And the fans just go, ooh, that's a bad move, though, from the fans. They, they roll. Well, I want you to take a look at the coverage that Syracuse is in. They're in a two deep here. You got two corners, two safeties. Third and three. It's a good call. Now, if he's releases, you got to get contact on him. Actually, it's a cover four where he's playing tight. And you cannot let him inside. You got to play off and inside if you're in what they call a cover four coverage, that safety up. If not, if you let the receiver inside, that's a weakness of the coverage because the safety's up and not defending the deep middle of the field. You let him run inside and off the field with no contact, it's pitch and catch. That's exactly what it was, a 67-yard strike. And now R.J. Anderson, uphill battle, going for Morant. That's incomplete. Grant Wiley among those close to the football. Good job by Adam Jones. Well, so RJ's telling, telling his boy Morant to take off down the field. When he starts scrambling around, just go ahead and run deep. And again, he can win the jump ball. RJ will throw it up there. All right, Morant at 6'5", 225, a senior from Parsippany, New York. They wanted him to get more consistent, obviously get him more involved because he came here with a lot of fanfare not had that consistency they had hoped for for such a big athletic kid. That's complete to Tim Washington. And he spins right into a West Virginia tackle as we take it back to Matt Weiner. 
Hi, Pam. Oklahoma State has got themselves a little breathing room against Baylor at Baylor. The Bears, just one Big 12 win this season. Doesn't look like they're going to get number two. Sean Willis goes over for the Pokes, makes it a 10-point game. And Purdue has officially retaken possession of the old Oaken bucket. 24-16, the final in Bloomington. Well, another season in the books for Indiana. They did at least win. They beat Illinois. At least they got a Big Ten win this season, but they lose the bucket again to Purdue. Well, here we have the Ben Schwartzwalder Trophy on the line between these two clubs, and that's complete to Jared Jones with the first down and more. So Jones, with good second effort, gets it out to the 32-yard line. I'll tell you, that's a great strong-arm throw by R.J. Anderson because he has Gurko coming in. Jerko coming in his face. And he's throwing off his back foot, and he throws a rope. Watch him hang in there. And here comes the blitz. There's a guy in his face. Yet he's jumping, doing an old jump pass. It's nice. Why a tittle jump pass? There it is. Jones, who does a good job getting upfield, not getting out of bounds, staying in bounds, getting all you can get. And he got a first down at the 32. Got to put it up pretty much on every down, and that one was a little jump pass with Washington. Unable to gather it in. Yeah, the timing screwed up. Washington didn't, didn't get to his spot quick enough. They had a play. They had two two blockers out there. They had a hat for a hat. They had a play. It's just the timing was messed up. Washington not seen a lot of action before today. He's been pressed in because Walter Reyes has that bad knee, even though we didn't see it on that on that 67-yard uh, touchdown pass he caught, which, by the way, was Reyes' first career touchdown reception. He's used to scoring on the ground. He has 15 on the ground just this year alone, but... He has now a touchdown catch to his credit. Anderson completes it to Andre Fontenet. Fontenet getting into the action. His first catch, a couple yards short of the first down. Coming up next, College Game Day now presented by Acura on ESPN2. Matt Weiner gets you up to date on everything. And on ESPN News, Chris and I will have a post-game extra for you. That is a first down to Morant. Keep the sticks moving. Yeah, West Virginia's smart here. I don't know if a lot of people aren't a fan of the prevent defense because you don't want to give up the quick score over the top, so you're going to play soft and deep. And after they catch it, make sure you make a sure tackle. Pick up of 10 right at midfield. Plenty of time, and he zips it in. Morant makes the catch that time on a bullet. Another first down for the Orangemen. Well, what they did is they snuck Washington on a crossing route. They got the linebackers to jump, and, and Morant comes in and sits in a soft spot because the linebacker is not being very smart, vacates his zone. Get to the deepest. Cover deepest to shortest, not shortest to deepest. That one is almost intercepted. A couple of Mountaineers were there. Adam Lenort and Kevin McClee. Right. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin got it right between the four and the three. I think he's a little surprised. Does a good job of getting in this drop. This time they don't jump the short one. There's the ball. He doesn't see it coming. That stops the clock. Three minutes and 16 seconds left to go. Reprieve for Anderson. Over the middle, completed again to Fontenet. Second time he's found him on this drive, and a good tackle by Lenore, keeping him inbounds, and the clock keeps rolling. Third down, half time. Definitely in, in four down territory. You're down 11. Field goal does you no good right here. Third and seven. Anderson zipping it underneath to Morant, but he's short of the first down marker, about a yard or so short. And obviously you go for it. The fans bellow a little bit because he was short. Way to go down for that. RJ could have put it up a little higher so he could stretch with that first. And West Virginia has taken its final timeout. Last timeout for West Virginia as they try to, if they get a stop here, the ball game is pretty much over. So the uh, BCS has been much discussed. Let's take a look at the standings right now. Ohio State leapfrogging over SC, but Ohio State is losing to Michigan right now. 35-21 is the score, with about three and a half minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. USC plays UCLA later on today. And they also finish up with Oregon State. LSU's got a challenger going down into Oxford today against yep. Eli Manning. Big one against and Ole Miss. Miss. And Michigan, if they hold on to beat Ohio State, will win the Big Ten. Outright. Outright, and uh, we'll see. 
how the chips fall in, but uh, the, the, the Big East, not in the national title hunt right now. Miami, Pittsburgh, and West Virginia all with one loss in the Big East. And uh, the head-to-head -head tie break is in effect. Miami beat West Virginia, and West Virginia beat Pittsburgh, but if there is a five-spot difference in the BCS standings, the bowl can take the other team. In other yeah. words, because West Virginia is below the other two teams in the BCS, they could be passed over. Yeah, Even, though, yeah they could be Big East yeah. Bowl champions. It wouldn't matter. Right, and, and would have to settle like last year. Remember, they went to the Continental Tire Bowl and lost to Virginia, and they were upset they didn't go to the Gator Bowl. And Notre Dame stole their spot. Notre the Dame Bowl, yeah. And then, you know, subsequently or consequently after that, they lost big time to Virginia in the bowl game. So a lot of stuff to be sorted out. This is the ball game here on fourth and two. Reyes. Their star gets it done, barely, but he does get the first down. Grant Wiley making the stop, the leading tackler on the season for this West Virginia team. It's a good job by Walter Reyes getting some tough yards. I'll tell you, they, he could probably could have snuck it in there because they had the bubble. Linebackers were playing off the line of scrimmage. They ran a toss sweep, but if Walter Reyes is healthy, he's the guy that you want to have the football. Yeah, he is. He has really showed some toughness today. He. Hurt his knee on the sixth play of scrimmage for Syracuse. I said they had the first time, but they're going to measure. 59 rushing yards here in the second half. He was minus one in the first half on three carries, and they do indeed get the first down. And as spectacular as Reyes has been, averaging over 100 yards a game, he has not gained 100 yards against any Big East team this season. He's had some huge games. He had 191 yards against North Carolina, 241 against Central Florida, 162 against Toledo. He's come close in the Big East, but has not perhaps cracked the century mark yet. Sip it. Morant. Boy, it almost took his head off. Yeah, and R.J. Anderson's throwing it, throwing a timing route. Morant's got to get his head turned around, press that route faster, turn around, get rid of the football because R.J. knows where to go with the ball, and he delivered a fastball there. You're right. Well, his second and about a half a yard short of the first down. Sixth catch of the day for Morant. Anderson, time over the middle, and Morant can hold on to it that time. Brian King was right on his back. I think the ball got tipped a little bit. He came in as a knuckler for Morant. He almost made a good catch. Two minutes to go, plenty of time for Syracuse now. They, they, they do have all three timeouts left. Trailing this one by 11. Meanwhile, Paul Pasqualoni's team trying to become bowl eligible. They still have two games left. They play at Rutgers next week and finish up with Notre Dame here. Reyes tiptoeing, finding the hole. And Reyes running for the first down. Adam Jones making the stop. Choosing not to use a timeout. Walter's helping their guys up. He's got to get lined up. You got the first down, stops the clock. You got to get lined up, get ready to go. Yes. Still, yep, three oh. timeouts. Right? All of their complement of timeouts. West Virginia's out of it. Anderson, what are you going to do? Everybody's covered. And he finally throws it away. Boy, that wasted a lot of time. Well, and, and I'm going to show you what. What wasted the time is that there's no receivers working through the back of the end zone. They got to move around and find spots. Everybody's standing still. And it doesn't take a, a lot of knowledge to understand that it's easier to cover a target than standing still. Keep your eyes on the orange guys back here in the end zone. Nobody will move around. See, they're moving a little bit, but then they stop. Nobody's moving. Nobody's moving. They're kind of just sitting around. See, Morant's sitting here sitting around, and, and, and R.J. was looking for him. He's got to run his route. Get open. Anderson, again, nowhere to go. He dumps it down, checks down to Reyes, and he has stopped a couple of yards short of the goal line. And still no timeout taken. Yeah, Finally, they do. Yeah. So Syracuse takes its first timeout with a buck 24 to go. Let's quickly go back to Matt Weiner. Matt. Pam, just a reminder, up ahead on ESPN2, the season-ending ADT Championship, the LPGA season, wrapping up in West Palm Beach, Florida. Lord Davies and Meg Mowen, your leaders by two shots after two rounds. Round three coming up here. Meanwhile, it's all over in Ann Arbor. DCS can begin...
computing. Scott McMullen back in the game for the Buckeyes, tipped and picked by Ernest Shazer, and that wrapped it up in front of an NCAA record crowd of 111,000 at the Big House. Michigan has won it. They're headed to the Rose Bowl. 35-21 is your final. All right, Matt, so all the, uh, all the uh, dust that was uh, flared up because Ohio State leapfrogged to number two in the BCS yeah. standings, the dust will settle now because they're not going to be number two next week. Let's no. take a look at the Big East standings, Chris. And there again, Syracuse trying to get the 500 to West Virginia in that three-game gridlock yeah. with Miami and Pittsburgh. I, I give credit to Rich Rodriguez and West Virginia, Pam. They were one and four after the Miami game and very easily could have made a decision to go to the dark side, but no, Rich has gotten yeah. it playing and they were he said that Miami game was good because they were mad that they lost they didn't feel like oh we almost beat Miami and we feel good all that touchy feely good stuff no they were <laughs> mad because they got beat they turned it around and got it going Miami and Pittsburgh by the way play each other in the last weekend of the season so those two guys still have to play and there's contact as a West Virginia defensive lineman jumped off sides The ball, offside, defense, contact foul, and the distance to the goal, still third down. And that moves the ball down to the one-yard line on third and goal. This drive has already covered 87 yards. with the penetration. That's the one thing that 3-5-3 gives you is the ability to get your linebackers to hit gaps. Forcing Syracuse to use a timeout. Good defensive stand by West Virginia. I like the call. You run the ball. So Syracuse now down to one timeout. In a game where they certainly had their their opportunities. So as they take the time out to talk things over, Pam, we're joined by Chris Spielman in a game really that was crucial for both teams. We had three lead changes alone in the first half. But West Virginia coming up with some big pass plays. Both of our quarterbacks, Rasheed Marshall and Anderson, have career days as far as throwing yeah, the ball. Yeah, both of them have played great, especially since both great running backs, Walter Reyes from Syracuse and Quincy Wilson from West Virginia, have been nicked up. Both guys have answered the challenge. And I'll tell you, R.J. Anderson, to me, showed a lot. Rasheed Marshall is just playing as well as yeah. I've ever seen him play, and I've seen him play a lot. And Reyes playing even though he nicked up his knee in the first half. And got to ask you, I know it might hurt you. Ohio State losing. Well, it, it, if you would have told me that somebody would have put up 35 on that defense, I would have said no yeah. way. But they were able to run the ball and throw the ball. And you can't play defense, you can't win. And, and Ohio State's offense put 21 up on the board, which should have been enough for that, that outstanding defense that they had. And that was the surprising part. Fourth and goal right here now for Syracuse. Again, this is, this is it. Time this time for Anderson. Towards the back of the end zone and is flipped away. Terrific play by Brian King. Got in front of Johnny Moran. It's a good break on the football by Brian King. And I think RJ locked in to Moran. Because he had Walter Ray sneaking out to the corner right here with nobody on him. He's locked in. See, he's locked in down that middle of the field. He's waiting for him to clear. It's a great job of Brian King selling out for the good of the boys. Knocking the ball away. See, he's locked in. He is locked in. Brian King gets a good beat on it, knocking the ball down. And King is used to doing that. He is the career pass deflection leader at West Virginia. Passing Aaron Beasley, who's had a nice career in the NFL. And Brian King is the king of pass deflections. And he just gave us a perfect example there to preserve and cement this victory for West Virginia. West Virginia still has to hope for some help. It's coming up next on ESPN2, the PGA ADT Championships from West Palm Beach, Florida. Oh, the Soren Stam always fun to watch. And Chris and I will join you from ESPN News for post-game coverage as we dissect this football game. Syracuse wearing all orange today. Might want to put them away because it didn't quite work. Yeah, they played hard. It was a great football game. Hard hitting, a lot of big plays. Rasheed Marshall, again, just stepping up and playing big. 
A huge win for Rich Rodriguez and the Mountaineers. As they stay in the hunt for that Big East championship, hugs all the way around. The last two seasons, by the way, West Virginia has lost only two games in the Big East, both of them to Miami, which says a lot about the way that Rich Rodriguez has really resurrected this program. That's an amazing stat. See, you told me I, I never would have known that if that was not paper. Yep. They only lost one last year and then that heartbreaker this year. So the final here, West Virginia wins it 34 to 23. Coming up, the LPGA ADT Championships from Florida. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Chris Spielman, I'm Pam Ward. West Virginia wins it. Goodbye from Syracuse.